All right, welcome everybody. AI Survivor is back. This is season number seven. Welcome to game one, first game of the season. People are super excited in chat. We've got almost 200 people watching here live. If you're either watching live, if you're here live, it's awesome. Glad to have you. If you're watching on the recording, no worries. Still glad to have you. Hope it's still entertaining. Hope you were not spoiled by what happened here. So we are watching the first game of the season. In this game, our pool one leader is Stalin. Our pool two leader is Gandhi. They really could not be more different in terms of personality. And then the unseated leaders that we've drawn are Hammurabi of Babylon, who has, we changed the colors slightly, actually has Gilgamesh's colors to make him stand out a little bit. Isabella of Spain, Pericles of Greece, and then Shaka of the Zulus. We'll see how many times I get Shaka and Stalin confused. Coming into this game in our picking contest, Stalin is the big favorite. About 50% have picked him to win. You can see I have also picked him to win. We'll see if he lives up to that. Uh, there's no consensus on who's going to come in second, but Gandhi is the popular pick for first to die. I also have him as first to die as well. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started and see what happens. All right, so when we begin these games, the first thing is always, where are the settlers going? We run this on deity, so the AIs get an extra settler to start the game. If you put it on domestics, you can see where they move it. It's wherever the little archer icon is. That's where they're moving their settler. So let's see. Okay, Stalin staying in the river valley. This is, okay, so this is already a slight break for uh, the pregame favorite Stalin, is the fact that um, Izzy is moving west. I think people expected that Izzy would move west, but there was a possibility she could have moved like to here, and then she would found a religion, and then Stalin's getting crushed by culture. But uh, going to move over here. There are more resources here, so that's not shocking. But this, what is this? Gandhi, what is this? Also, yeah, yeah, uh, Symbol's got this in the chat. I think others had this as well. Contested polytheism, Isabella Gandhi. Now, Gandhi will win this race if they don't swap off because Gandhi is first in turn order. Um, and then over here, Pericles is moving northwest and Shaka is moving to the southwest. Okay. All right, so we've got our first cities, but... <laughs> <laughs> the reactions in chat are just awesome. Already got some great stuff in here. Gandhi. Uh, okay, so if he wins the religion race, this will be a holy city. So he'll probably get a religion here at some point. Um, <laughs> well, it's a Plains Hill tile, and it is also a... a re it does have a corn resource. So there is something, but um, typically... The, one of the big advantages of the leaders that found religions is if they get an early religion, it like claims a lot of territory with its culture. This is not going to claim any land with its territory. <laughs> First time chat. Uh-oh. Uh, meanwhile, down here, Pericles. Now, this city is, you know, it's a lot of green territory. The problem is all the resources are under jungle tiles. So you got a dice tile that can't be used until calendar. I guess it's two food, zero production, four commerce. I guess that's something, but like... This is under jungle, this is under jungle. This is not the strongest spot. This is a pretty weak spot to put down a second city. Um, yeah, claims oil, I suppose, but the AI actually does not see invisible resources in Civ 4. They did in Civ 3, not in Civ 4. So I don't think these are particularly good second city spots for the uh, peaceful AIs. I will say this being on a hill is not bad if, if uh, Shaka comes calling, but I think maybe there could have been stronger spots for the second cities. All right, Izzy's got a nice spot here. She is going to need animal husbandry to unlock this spot. And of course, she's going to be off in religious land for a while. But um, yeah, six food tile is always nice. Floodplains tiles are always nice. A pretty solid spot. Let's see, where, let's see where Stalin picks. Wait, where is he going? He's like kind of wandering around in here. All right, so he's grabbed a spot with the pigs. Now, resource-wise, this is not amazing, but uh, it just has a lot of floodplains and it's on a river. So that's pretty nice. I mean, this is a good city spot, just he was in a strong position to begin with. Uh, also note that Stalin and Shaka both researched archery out of the gate, which is like, what the heck? Why would they open with archery? He needs to get agriculture super bad because he has this uh, rice tile and he's got a billion floodplains tiles in here. All right, Hammurabi has, uh, what is this? <laughs> out of all the places he could have gone. So note that like everyone is ignoring the middle of the map. Izzy went west. Hammurabi went west, Gandhi went east. I suppose that um, Pericles did go towards the center of the map, but like, what? What is this? Um, again, long term, good, but until you can cut down the jungle, this is a useless tile. 
Until he has iron working, this is just a bare um, grassland tile. And then the dyes are useless. One food, one commerce. This is a bad spot for a second city. Bad spot for a second city. <laughs> no, can't change the name to Lenin. It's, it's not worth the effort to try to change the name. Um, so I am not super impressed with a lot of these early cities. Let's see where Shaka goes. Where is his settler? Oh, he's going to pick kind of a jungle spot too. All right, this at least has the corn tile though, right? Double corn, a lot of jungle, but double corn. Pushing over to the west. Low commerce. I will say this is not a good spot from a commerce perspective. It's probably going to hurt his economy. Also, what's this? Hammurabi also on the polytheism train. And Izzy has now jumped ahead of Gandhi in the race for polytheism. So interesting stuff there. All right, so not much is going to happen on the next immediate turns. We can speed this up. It looks like Izzy's going to win the race here. Stalin is going for agriculture. Shaka on mysticism. That's weird. So it looks like Izzy is going to win, and then Gandhi and Hammurabi are going to be left holding the bag here. So this will be a holy city here. And there's Christianity, so she's going to pick Christianity for her religion, to no surprise. So that's certainly good for her. And let's see what Hammurabi and Gandhi choose to do. I bet Gandhi is going to go for, um, what's the other early religion? Meditation, I would think. Shaka going for uh, mysticism. All right, so Hammurabi. Okay, Hammurabi dropped out of the religion race. He went over to pottery. And Gandhi is going to get the meditation religion. Shaka will get mysticism, or meditate, or mysticism, but not a religion. And Izzy's also in agriculture, which is a key tech for her. Stalin also in agriculture. Okay. All right, so as I said, not much going to happen for the next turn, so we can ad just advance a couple turns here until, because no one is going to have an art, a settler out on the map for the next couple turns here. So Gandhi's gonna get the next religion. Probably pick Hinduism. All right, there it is. So get the Hinduism spread. This being on the coast might be a little trickier to spread this, but we'll see. We'll see what he goes there. Stalin, okay, Stalin went agriculture, animal husbandry, which is what he needs to unlock. Well, I guess technically he already, he, he mined this tile, so he doesn't need to improve it, but it certainly doesn't hurt. He needs to now get to pottery. Um, so he can start cottaging some of those tiles. He has a settler. Who's closest to getting a settler done, just out of curiosity? Uh, settler, settler. Looks like Gandhi's going to get the first one, and then Stalin shortly after that. So we'll keep an eye on, on those, yeah. But uh, so far, the early religions have gone to the two we were expecting. Gandhi's now on priesthood. That's definitely interesting. Um well, one good thing for Pericles, he did manage to get the gold resource improved. Now, here's the big problem for him. He has not connected any of his food resources. I guess he is on agriculture now, but uh, yeah, no ag no farm yet on this corn tile. He has no food in either of his cities so far, which is less than great. We'll look at the capitals in a couple more turns. I think I usually do around turn 25 just to see how things are going there. All right, so Gandhi's got his settlers about to finish. Let's see where he's going to send this. And, and no one has gone for the third religion yet. So monotheism is still out there. At least Pericles now has somewhat belatedly gone for agriculture. He did build a road between his two cities, so he does get the plus one commerce. So that's, you know, it's something. Gold tile will help make up for a lot, though. That's pretty nice. All right. So we got a settler out here, and we got a settler out here from Gandhi. Let's see where they're going. Gandhi is, where is his settler? Here it is right here, moving it south. But uh, we're at turn 25, so let's take a quick look at the capitals. Okay, Stalin has mined this tile, farmed one of the floodplains. Not not amazing. Improve this, and it looks like he's about to improve. Looks like he's going to improve the pig's tile. Not amazing, not terrible. How about Gandhi? Uh, Gandhi has mined the hill tiles and done nothing else. Oof. That's a bit rough. 25 turns in the game. None of your resource tiles improved yet has not improved this either. Not great, not not great. All right, we already saw down here, got the mines done, but nothing else. How about Shaka? He's built a lot of farms, farm the bananas, um, really needs to get to animal husbandry. Now you would think that Shaka would go for animal husbandry quickly because he starts with ag and, he starts agriculture hunting. He's got the double prereqs, but has not researched animal husbandry yet. So not amazing. And Izzy managed to get her corn done, uh, farm. So that's decent. Needs animal husbandry, but is researching it, so 
has some of the tools she needs for her start. Yeah, she has um, one, two, three different animal husbandry resources. She really needs that tech. And then Hammer down here, oof. He has uh, improved his rice, but has not improved anything else and is working a whole bunch of forest tiles. Yikes, this is, mm, yeah, this is, not, this is not great. Not so great there. Um, <laughs> not the opening you want. I guess he built a road connecting his cities, but like, when we talk about the AI, right, they start the game with a worker, they start the game with two settlers. Like, look at all the, how many worker turns did he put into building these roads, right? Like, how many worker turns wasted was this? This is an incredible amount of worker turns wasted on building roads. I know it's the AI and whatnot, but still, sometimes you can only shake your head at how inefficient some of this stuff is. Okay, yeah, forests tend to screw up the AI and early on. Having forests is not necessarily great for the AI. As I said, they do tend to struggle with it a bit. Anyway, Gandhi's about to get a, a settler. Looks like he's going to put it down here, I think, on the hill tile. Yep. Not bad. I mean, it's floodplains enough for food. Iron later on. Not bad. Plains hill tile for the extra hammer. Going to put a little pressure on these two in the early game, right on top of each other. Now, Stalin also had a settler out. And where did it go? Oh, here it is. It's right here. If he plants it over, like, right there, that would be, or right here, would be pretty nice with lock down his border with Izzy. Let's see where he goes. Okay. Not bad. He just needs to get a border expansion to um, grab this. And look at this. He got here just before Izzy did. Izzy was maybe two turns away from snapping. I, Izzy could still settle here, though. Like, that's a valid spot for a city. Let's see if she does choose to go there. And I bet she is. I don't know. Maybe she's going further north. Oh, where is she going with this settler? <laughs> where else are there settlers? So she's got one up there. And did Hammurabi just build one here? Hammurabi just built the settler here. His size, size one city. Um, before that, though, Shaka has put down a city. You should take a quick look at that. Going straight to conflict. Yeah, I'm hoping the two of them can share religion. I kind of have them working together in this game, but that's not guaranteed. I will say if Shaka... And, uh, there's another one. If Stalin... <laughs> if Stalin and Izzy get into a conflict with each other, that greatly increases the odds of Gandhi or Pericles winning. Um, anyway, so Shaka has founded another city down here, and there's a barb city that popped up down in the tundra. So we had a Stonehenge build on... Who is it that's got... Oh yeah, over here for Babylon. Okay. Still very curious. I guess this is going to plant up there? Oh boy. Wow. Okay. This is... Uh... I mean, that's a, that's a city, all right. Um, out of all the places on the map Izzy could have picked, she has decided to go here. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I guess there's a tundra deer. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. The barb cities tend to be pretty good because they usually pop up in resource clusters. Well, that should create some border tension eventually between these two. And so that's not amazing. All right, let's see who else had a settler out that we were tracking. Pericles is, uh, is going down to the southern coast, apparently. Oh, Pericles, why? Why this spot of all places? <laughs> apparently he has bronze working right now but because he just adopted slavery. But it's like, why this spot, Pericles? It claims no land at all. And it, I mean, you're creative, so you're going to pop borders and grab this for food. But still, out of all the places you could have sent this, and this is the fish by one tile, yes. Or this is the fish by one tile, too, seriously. All right, well, let's keep an eye out for where Hammer's settler is going and see if he gets Stonehenge. I suspect he will because no one else is building Stonehenge at the moment, as far as we can tell, right? Stalin's building Great Wall. No one else is building Stonehenge. There's a number of other settlers. Gandhi actually had double settler in production, which is kind of interesting. Did Stalin build another settler or did he just stop on three cities? Because if he stopped on three cities, that's not great for him. Yeah, he appears to have stopped on three cities right now. I said not great for him. All right. Well, there's some barb archers over here causing problems, and a barb arch, a barb city over here too. Oh man, what is this? <laughs> what? Okay. Now this city's not gonna flip because it's already building a monument, but but just why? <laughs> Hammurabi, why? Why? <laughs> why this spot of all places? I mean. 
is it just me or we have like these huge parts of the map that are just being completely ignored by the AI so they can cram right up on top of one another? Really, really weird. Um, <laughs> very odd decisions here. Anyway, uh, I don't believe anyone has metals hooked up just yet. I don't think anyone does. I guess the Great Wall is one way to expand borders at a city like this. The city has way too more food than it can use right now. Look, there's 10 billion food here, but you can't use it. Imagine if this food was being used just to churn out settlers instead of doing this weird quixotic attempt to build the Great Wall. <laughs> very odd. I don't think anyone's plotting war yet. It's still very early in the game to be plotting war. Um, but we should have some more settlers popping out soon. I know Gandhi has two in production. Now Izzy's also on Stonehenge, but I think she's going to get beaten to that. And Shaka has one. Yeah, Shaka and Gandhi are the next closest to get settlers out. So we'll try to track where they're going. And also keep an eye on the Great Wall. By the way, that third religion is still out there at the moment for someone who wants it. Stonehenge three turns versus... Where's the other Stonehenge build? It was uh, It's the two Western leaders, yeah. Three turns and seven turns over there. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's going pretty well for Pericles, aside from this spot that he picked, but certainly not getting much pressure from anyone else nearby. So anyway, we've got a settler there and another one here from Shaka. All right, now Stalin's on double settlers. For some reason, he felt he had to build city walls and barracks before he would build more settlers. For some reason. <laughs> Is building some more settlers now though. Alright, Shaka is probably gonna grab this spot. I think he wants the hill tile. Alright, so we get the Stonehenge build over here. First wonder of the game. Did slow him down a little bit, but he's gonna have extra culture and we'll get a great person. Uh, no AI leader will plot until they hook up uh, some kind of metal. I believe that's universal for all leaders in, uh, in Civ 4. Right, there's a monument in here, so that's going to push back this city shortly. And that great wall build. Oh, wow, look at this. It's a barb city right here. We've got a couple of barb cities in interesting spots. This is going to be a source of conflict. This one, not so much, but this one over here, especially this one. Anyway, so Shaka is the first of four cities. Gandhi also has a settler that's moving around up here. So Stalin finishes bronze working. On to iron working. Interesting. What is he doing with his tech path? Does not have wheel or pottery or mysticism, but is going iron working here. Huh. Okay, buddy. He actually has iron right outside his borders, but that won't help him. He can't connect it. Not the greatest opening for uh, Stalin here. <laughs> Bismarck Gambit, perhaps. Gandhi might have a shot to get over here and claim these resources. All right. Well, we did see the Great Wall go to Stalin. We'll help him with the barbs. And he just finished a settler, right? He was building one. Did he finish it or did he swap off the... Oh, there it is. It's unprotected, apparently. Well, I guess he doesn't have to worry about barbs that much because as soon as he settles, they're, uh, they can't get harmed by barbarians. Interesting. Well, I guess that has a resource, and so Gandhi took this spot. This resource cluster here, though, is still available for the taking. And it looks like Izzy's going to grab the second religion there. Yeah, this gold is pretty valuable. I mean, it's both the commerce and it's the plus one happiness in all the cities. Kind of a big deal. We also haven't seen religion spread yet. I would expect Izzy's religion to start spreading soon. She's also on an oracle build. Hammurabi, does he have a fourth city yet? Nope, not yet. Uh, Pericles found it over here on the East Coast a couple turns ago. I missed that when it first went down. So a race, race resource. Yeah, he really needs to get to ironworking at some point too. <laughs> His economy is suffering a little bit there. And yeah, Izzy's going to found... Oh, wow. Izzy could end up founding um, monotheism in another city. It could pop up here and then spread like to Stalin which would be not great. <laughs> not great for the two of them working together, certainly. Anyway, yeah, Stalin needs to get his economy in order here. 
you know, this ironworking is not not the thing for him to be researching. He really needs pottery, and, and uh, wheeled pottery is what he needs desperately. And he has not gone for them yet. All right, it's turn 50. Let's uh, take stock of the game right now. Look at our uh, comparison. So as far as GMP goes, right now Hammurabi and Pericles are in the lead, but a lot of that's creative culture, so it's a little bit deceptive. Production, looks like Shaka and Gandhi are leading. Food, they're all pretty close. Gandhi is maybe slightly in the lead. Power, Stalin has the most power because he's been building a ton of archers for some reason. And culture, Stalin and Shaka are the worst in culture. No, Hammurabi's not creative, but remember he built Stonehenge, so Stonehenge gives him a ton of culture. That's the big reason why he's uh, so high on there. Yes, uh, in terms of economy, I just want to see real quick. 11 beakers for Stalin, 10 for Gandhi, 12 for Hammurabi, 20 for Izzy, 13 for Pericles, and 9 for Shaka. So not, not a ton of difference right there so far. I usually try to get a picture of the map 50 turns into the game, too, for use later on. By the way, um, if anyone wants to do the written report for this game, just let me know after it's done, because I could sure use some help with doing the written reports. Um, we have a lot going on with our little boy William at the moment anyway topic for us to some of us to discuss later off stream okay still pretty close um Stalin's score is low but that's partly because he has not expanded borders anywhere except at the capital that's part of the reason why uh he's missing a lot of land points so his position's not quite that bad but I wouldn't say it's an amazing opening I do think Hammurabi's in the worst shape out of anyone in this game so far Hammurabi is just kind of totally dead in the water right now Izzy's the wealthiest. Stalin's economy, yeah, not great. The ironworking choice was really bad. He needed to go wheel pottery. That's definitely hurting him. All right, Gandhi. Big move from the Gandhi. Uh, for those of you who've got Gandhi in the in picking contest or in fantasy, this is big. He managed to grab the um, gold resource. This was about halfway between Stalin and Gandhi, and Gandhi's the one who got there. This is a big deal, um, and the fact that this is on a hill tile means there is a good chance that we could see Shaka or Stalin unsuccessfully ramming units into this city down the road, so that, that's pretty big. I will say that this has noticeably increased the odds that we're going to see a peaceful victory type here uh, as a result of this. Yeah, all of Gandhi's cities have been on hills. That's, that's I mean, he doesn't do that deliberately, but like that's helping him a lot, as, as Jack noted in the chat there. Everyone has been on a hill. Since Gandhi really just wants to stall for time, that's a pretty big deal. All right. Meanwhile, Izzy is still also on three cities. Does she have a settler out, out of curiosity? She has one in the capital. She has not moved out yet. She's building another settler there. Uh, also works, she's about to land Oracle and land Monotheism. But I'm not sure that either one does that much for her. Look at this Shaka 29 turns of, uh, <laughs> of iron, iron working there. Yeah, some of the more aggressive leaders, the Stalins and Shakas of the world, might want to focus a little bit more on their economy. I would expect this religion to pop up. Actually, the religion has to pop up in Seville because it won't pop up in the capital and it's not going to pop up in Barcelona, which already has a religion. So we're going to see a religion pop up here next turn. Taoism. I should have revealed the map. Yeah, there's a very good odds that Taoism now spreads to Stalin. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Just revealing the map there. What did the fantasy players bid on Gandhi and Stalin? So that's a good question. Um, Gandhi was taken with a bid of... 45. I could just put this on the screen if people are curious. I don't want to detour too much from the game, but Gandhi was taken with a bid of 45 by Henrik, and Stalin was a bid of 45 as well. A little bit cheaper than some of the other pool one leaders to get these. Okay. Well, on we go then. Still no conflict between anyone, but uh, what looked better for uh, Stalin a little while ago. Now maybe not looking so great. He's getting boxed in pretty good here. Uh, Gandhi is doing a nice job of claiming land, and uh, Shaka is actually doing a pretty good job of land claiming land too. There's also a lot of barb cities on this map. We already have four barb cities. So who ends up getting these will matter a good deal down the road. So Izzy's good. Let's see, what did Izzy take with Oracle? 
Let's see. She took Monarchy for her free tech. And I don't think that that was the worst choice, at least if she goes to Hereditary Rule. She also founded a city right here, which is nice. Um, she does not have wines, but Hereditary Rule for happiness is always nice. Yep, not a good game so far for Stalin, I would say, which I think a lot of us were expecting him to do well. I do think he's a bit wasted this opening. Although he's about to get copper here, which is going to help him a good bit. He actually found it on the copper. <laughs> also going for pyramids here with no stone, which is a questionable decision. Let's see how everybody feels about one another real quickly yet. So not too much so far. I will say Gandhi is the worst enemy of Stalin, Isabella, and Shaka, which is not great. <laughs> it's not what you want. Um, otherwise, not too much has happened uh, so far. <laughs> But yeah, Izzy, I think, is doing pretty well. Would be helpful if she could get another city or two. And uh, Gandhi's looking pretty sharp here, too. As long as he can avoid getting attacked. He does not have any metals connected yet. He's got this one right outside his borders, but uh, he's not going to have that without... He needs to plant another city. He's not going to have that anytime soon otherwise. Yeah, Izzy oracled monarchy. Did she flip into hereditary rule, though? Uh, she has not gone into hereditary rule, which is pretty much the whole reason why you want monarchy as a tech. So maybe she just has to wait out the spiritual cooldown or something. Did Shaka crash his economy? It looks like he did. He is on 30% research. So yes, it looks like he did. He needs to, does he have pottery yet out of curiosity? Uh, he does not have pottery. So that's his problem. He can't build cottages. Uh, I mean, he did build roads connecting his cities. One, two, three, four. He has six cities, but he has no happiness resources. So, like, this city is unhappy at size four because he whipped. Um, but he is, does have metals connected. He's got a copper somewhere. He found, Okay, he found it on copper. So he's building metal units. And uh, this would be a very juicy prize because he could really use the ivory. This city is even better, but uh, doesn't have the ivory. Anyway... So, pretty pretty interesting one so far. Pericles did get another city a little while back. Did not claim any additional territory, though. It looks like Pericles is going to get the pyramids, which would be very nice for him. Because he'll probably go into representation with that. Um, I don't think Shock... Or, uh, wow, there's another one for your counter. I don't think Stalin is going to get the pyramids, but he will get some fail gold out of it, which might actually be good for him. Might actually be good for him. <laughs> Him just to help his economy. He finally got iron working. And now he really needs to go for wheel pottery. Yeah, all right. That's when he needs to rescue his economy. He is at least on wheel. He has not queued up pottery yet. St. Petersburg expanded borders only because it had that great wall inside. I mean, I guess that's one way to pop borders. Just build a wonder in your city. Izzy is uh, building missionaries, so we'll see if she sends them to someone else. Now, the thing is, she can't send a missionary to someone else or Gandhi until they research writing because they can't sign open borders until that happens. So they're limited as far as how much they can spread until that actually happens. We did see another city from Hammurabi. It's another fairly low-quality city. I think he is maybe struggling more with the barbarians than anyone else because, like, this would have been an opportunity to expand, but the barbarians have that blocked. This is another barbarian. Wow, look at all these warriors and archers. <laughs> it's an archer and warrior convention, um, but they're never going to break through. Not five barb archers in a city on a hill. Um, and then down here, there's another city. So I think it's blocking Hammer from expanding a bit. And meanwhile, over here, Shaka and Pericles have almost got their borders to touch. Shaka's up to seven cities now. Jeez, Shaka. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven cities now. Shaka doing a good job with the expansion, but man, did he kill his economy. He desperately needs... Oh boy, he might have uh, he might have shot himself in the foot, though. Oh god. Oh god! Two beakers per turn! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's not good. Um, so, it's one thing to go down to 10% science when you have pottery tech. When you don't have pottery tech and cannot build cottages, uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. 
you don't want to fall all the way down to two peakers per turn when you don't have the tech that lets you build cottages. Well, uh, maybe he can capture a barbed city and get some capture gold. Maybe. Uh, oh boy. Um, the iron working is actually not crazy because it unlocks this, which would be really good for him. But oh boy. Oh boy, that's not good. <laughs> if you have Shaka to win, it's like he looks good superficially right now, but uh, I would be concerned for the long run. I would be concerned. All right, Gandhi's on iron working, so even if he doesn't grab the copper, he'll just have iron in eight turns anyway. So it looks like he's going to make it past the early game. Uh, I have no medals danger phase, at least. Um, so it could be worse. Let's just check and see if anyone's plotting war. I don't think anyone is. But just in case someone is Gandhi, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. But we should at least check. It does not appear that anyone is currently plotting war, from what I can see. We would have nothing to gain. Stalin's all the way down in last place in score. That's actually a bad sign. <laughs> all right, no one appears to be plotting war right now. Things can change over the course of the game, but if you're this far behind early on, it's tough to come back from that. You need some real breaks to go your way. Yeah, it's tough to come back from that, so... I don't know. This game feels pretty up in the air right now. I will say Gandhi and Pericles are looking a lot better than I thought they would from this starting position right now. Pericles has made some odd choices with where he put his cities down, but I think his overall situation is not that shabby. I think Gandhi is probably in the best shape, though. I mean, he's taken over the score lead from Izzy. He's already got a size 9 capital. And I know that there's some unhappiness here, but still, look, he's got a lot of infrastructure. Has not really been called on his farmer's gambit, and he's going to have iron connected. So, I mean, you can see how low he is in power, but as long as he's not getting attacked right now. And his cities are all on hills, and they mostly have a ton of culture, so they're pretty well defended. This was really the key spot for him to get. I think that might have been the most important city on the whole map. All right, that said, though, it's still very early, and a ton can happen in this game. I just... I like Gandhi's position. Izzy just dropped another city over here. Well, a couple turns ago. Who lands these barb cities could swing things a lot as well. And Shaka has brought at least an Impy over here. But uh, I don't think he's going to punch through those barb archers anytime soon. Impies just don't have enough strength for that. Maybe the bowmen will do better. Oh, no, they get a bonus against um, melee units. They don't get a bonus against um, archers. I'm getting confused with other unique units. Look at that, the border's expanded here, and now this city is getting squeezed a little bit. New solid city up here. And it does bring furs. The extra happiness would be nice. So he's finally belatedly going to pottery, but just feels like that was maybe a little bit delayed right now. Might have taken a little too long to get there. All right, oh, apparently somebody attacked there. Oh, I guess Shaka attacked with some axes. So Izzy got the shrine that's an early shrine only turned 72 oh wow what is this running four priest specialists 19 culture per turn here Jeez. <laughs> okay um anyway it looks like shaka attacked here let's reveal the map just again just to make sure we don't miss any city captures so there are only two archers here left there's an axe that's going to be able to promote an attack again. There's going to be an impy that could be combat three, which I believe would have like 50-50 odds. And then if there's like one one unit left, someone else can attack um, and like finish off because there's all these warriors and archers here. Let's just see what happens. I guess Nubian held for the time being. It actually built a new archer. So it looks like Shaka's attack came up a little short. There's an axe at 0 0.5. That's a 10 out of 10 experience. So Shaka's already unlocked the heroic epic if he wants uh, the unit requirement at least. There's one city garrison, two archer, and then a fresh archer. That city garrison, two archer is like the movie 300 or something, <laughs> fighting off all comers. All right, so I guess Nubian's holding out for the time being. All the Shaka units. Oh, they promoted to um, medic on that axe and is healing. Anyway. Yeah, Stalin founded one city that I pointed out here, Yekaterinburg, but Stalin has gotten kind of squeezed. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think six cities is enough. I don't think this is sufficient. Like, Gandhi also has six cities, and they're very well bunkered in here defensively. Gandhi went over here and settled on the copper. Um, like, I don't think that would be enough to take down Gandhi. It would have to be a tag team effort. So, 
Per Pericles just got pyramids. So did he did he go uni suffrage or did was it just this turn? I might have missed the pop up. Did he revolt at all? Pericles. Uh, nope, he went representation. Okay, he went representation, which is definitely better. Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> Little slow on the uptake on my part there, but yeah, he took that. That's going to help him a lot. One, two, three, four, five. He's got six cities. There's still room for more. Probably room for one here and then maybe two more cities in here. Meanwhile, how is Shaka doing? Shaka has apparently managed to recover his economy enough to get back up to 30%. So it looked like he might have just killed himself there. But no, he got up to nine beakers per turn. And as I said, the iron working, you know, it's a little bit silly, but it's he has so much jungle, it's really not that bad. That tile will get him some additional happiness and uh, additional commerce. Does need to get pottery tech, though. And Hammurabi got another city down here, which unlocked this gold tile for him, which is kind of nice. He's still in last place, though. Stalin is, like, filling in text he should have gotten 25 to 30 turns ago. Now belatedly picking up mysticism. Izzy didn't have bronze working. What the heck? How did she not have bronze working before? <laughs> um, but, like, now the map is so settled that it's really hard for anyone to get any of these tiles. There's all right, I'm trying to keep an eye on... Nubian over here, too, because could potentially get snapped up by somebody. And Stalin's got another settler over here. Pericles didn't really need mysticism, though, because he's creative. All right, Izzy is apparently moving some city raider warriors down here. Just finished Temple of Artemis. Okay, she has built quite a few of these uh, early wonders that are great profit-based. Very slow to get that uh, bronze working tech. I think... Stalin's gonna settle. I think he's gonna settle right here. Novgorod still has not expanded borders to pick up this. And uh, Izzy's religion has not spread, or Gandhi's religion. Neither one has spread it all yet. I suppose that's probably because no one has um, writing tech yet for open borders, but still, a little bit slow. You might I mean, you would have thought that maybe the Taoism would spread. It's literally three tiles away from Novgorod here. Yeah, Stalin found it here. Unfortunately, my. Oh, and oh, wow. Okay, well, that was a big turn. So Stalin snuck in and grabbed this barb city. That's very significant for him. Um, that could have gone to pretty much anyone because there were so many units standing around outside. Stalin getting that helps him very much. Um, like, that could have gone to Hammurabi. It could have gone to Shaka. It could have gone to Izzy. Now with uh, Yakutsk, he's actually one, two, three, four, five, six. Now he's actually up to eight cities. That might be enough to start doing something. The problem is I think he's going to be more directed at Izzy than I think he is going to be directed at Gandhi here. And um, if he spends a significant part of the game going after Izzy, Gandhi is in very good shape if that's the case. Yeah, it's true. Shaka did all the work for him. It's true. But uh, it does go up to eight cities. So uh, No one has laid siege to this barb city yet. And then this one, these two down here, this one has been attacked because there's a promotion on one of the archers. But uh, so far, yeah. Shaka at least is now finally going to Pottery Tech. All right, let's just do a quick check-in on who's got the most power. So, yeah, Gandhi, uh, once he connected that metal resource, look, his power just ballooned. So he is, Gandhi is not vulnerable at all. It's actually Izzy that's the most vulnerable because she doesn't have metals hooked up yet. Yeah, no metals hooked up yet. She just hook up wines. So she has bronze working, but she does not have copper, right? Or strategic resources, yeah. She has no copper. She does have iron up here, but she needs to research iron working. She would actually be super vulnerable if someone attacked her right now because she has no metals um, whatsoever. Does have horses, but no metals. So let's just do a quick check in, see if somebody's plotting. She well, she can't. She doesn't have metals, so she can't be plotting war. All right. Well, our first war of the game is incoming soon. Who is Shaka going to be tossed at? Gonna fly off like a missile at somebody. Uh, probably Pericles or Gandhi. Most likely gonna be one of these two, but which one will it be? Or it could be someone else, but those are the most likely targets because he is annoyed with them. So we're getting ready to see some action already. That'll be incoming soon. All right, Pericles, no, not surprising. Gandhi, I would be shocked if he was plotting war. Stalin, I would not be as shocked, but no, he's not. Okay, just just Shaka. So let's try to keep an eye on Shaka for right now. You can usually see... All right, well, it looks like he's rallying his stack here. It looks like this is where he's 
plotting. So that would suggest that Pericles is his target. Does Shaka have border? I believe he did have border tension penalties with Pericles. Yeah, he had minus two there, so that does mean it's more likely. And that absolutely could open it up a chance for Hammurabi to snipe these barb cities. Very much so. Look at this barb archer causing problems over here, just being annoying. It suicided uh, on the city, but still. Very annoying. Yeah, Stalin's building a decent amount of uh, units as well. He's finally started to get some cottages down, which he desperately needs. All right, and writing is finally being researched by a bunch of people. So we'll see open borders, and then maybe we'll start seeing some missionaries flying around. All right, now that could be significant. Shaka has picked up the minority religion of um, Isabella, not her Christianity, which is going to increase his dislike for Gandhi, at the very least. Well, I said missionaries flying around. All right, Izzy has also planted an ice city up here. No um, food bonuses, not like that fish. Like you can actually found a pretty decent city if it's like right here. Not not good, not a good city, but you know, eight water tiles to work makes for something decent. Yeah, these barb cities are being untouched for the moment. Should we not discuss the game in the Discord? No, I think it's fair. I think it's fair to discuss. People are going to want to discuss. I think if you weren't able to see live, it's understandable. You should probably just stay away from the Discord for, you know, 24 hours until you have a chance to watch the video. I think it's fair to discuss in the Discord because people are going to want to discuss. I don't want to be like, no, you can't talk about AI Survivor. <laughs> so I think that that's fair. Um, does Stalin have any settlers? He has one down here. I don't know if there's room for this city, but he has one here. Is he going to try to cram this into a little hole in the culture? Well, Izzy's probably going to use that for a second shrine, which would be interesting. All right, well, if Shaka, or if, there's another one. If Stalin was going to found down here, he's not able to. Okay, Pericles going to Hinduism, that's expected, picking up Gandhi's religion. Still noteworthy, though. So these two are going to be very tight with one another. And them being next to each other, sharing the same religion, that's pretty good for both of them. It means they will not fight each other under any circumstances, and they'll kind of guard each other's backs. So makes it, again, more likely that one of them will win this game. It's actually pretty tight right now on score. It's kind of rare to, usually by this point in time in the game, we start seeing a little more separation on score, but been pretty close overall here. Pretty close. All right, still watching to see Shaka. Um, now he had a stack rallying over here. All right, and Hammer, up. oh, okay. So Hammer has picked up Izzy's majority religion. So the big question now is, what is Stalin going to get? Is he going to get, which one of these three religions does he pick up? Because he has not picked up any of them. And it's largely random where, which one he gets. Um, because that's, that could heavily influence which side he ends up on diplomatically here. It's just one of those things that from game to game is going to be kind of random. <laughs> here comes a great prophet to build the shrine. Yeah, Izzy has two shrines already. There's the Confucian one. And she just founded another ice city in the tundra. <laughs> another one that has, well, it's got iron there. So people are saying, is Stalin plotting? Nope, he's not plotting war. Does he have open borders? So right now, Stalin has open borders with Pericles and Hammurabi. He doesn't have them with Izzy yet, which is kind of interesting. She did found a second city up there. Again, on, on deity, though, the AI gets so many cost bonuses, pretty much any city is good to have on Deity, just because everything is so cheap for the AI. All this city really needs is a lighthouse and a granary, and it's decent. Like, it's not good, but it's decent. Anyway, I'm trying to see where Shaka might be setting... Plot. Is Shaka still plotting wars? He's actually second in score right now. Yeah, he's still plotting war. Where is this guy going? Okay, here's his attack stack right here. But where is he going to launch this? If he throws this into Stalin, you can pretty much just give this game to Gandhi or Pericles right now. If he sends, I mean, it's possible he does border Stalin. You never know. It's more likely it goes after Pericles, but we just don't know. He's plotting against somebody. Unfortunately for him, though, like this is a city on a hill with 50% defenses. This is also a city on a hill that's about to have walls. Like these are not soft targets. Unfortunately for him.
Stalin's got a decent stack down here too. Maybe these guys should try to take these barb cities, <laughs> which are still hanging out over here. Izzy looks like she might get this one, but she can't build units better than warriors because she doesn't have iron working yet. So she'll finally have iron for a metal resource soon when she connects that. Anyway, I'm trying to keep an eye on Shaka to see where, if anywhere, this army that he's building is going. Otherwise, though, uh, yeah, I'm a little surprised the game stayed peaceful as long as it has. All right, sure. Click the borders. Well, Stalin is now the worst enemy of Izzy. Oh, oh, all right. Adopts Taoism. Hmm. Well, the odds of Izzy and Stalin working together have certainly gone down now. Worst enemy of Isabella. Gandhi is the worst enemy of Stalin and Shaka, though. Worst enemy of Gandhi is Shaka. Yeah, it's really interesting how the religions have broken here, right? So we've got two Christians in the west. We've got two Taoists in the center, although it's one shot. This could still flip if desired. And then the east, we have the we have significantly more Hinduism in the east. Gandhi also converted Shaka's capital, so he might flip into Hinduism at some point if Gandhi keeps sending missionaries. So... The notion of uh, Stalin and Izzy working together seems to be going down. Uh, the fact that the minority religion was right here was kind of a bad break for those two working together, if you thought they might work together as I did. This Barb City is still... Uh, Hammurabi has been expanding a bit more of late. These Barb Cities, somehow, for some reason, still have not gotten much attention. Oh! Shaka stack is on the move. Where is it going? It's into Pericles territory. All right, that was the most predictable target. But we do have our first war of the competition. Shaka declares on Pericles. Let's put it on the counter. First war of the game. End of the season. I do not think this is going to do much, but let's take a look at power. Uh, I mean... Shaka's got a lot of power, but I don't think he's going to have too much success. He would have had much more success going after... Really, he should have gone after the Barb Cities, but um, he would have had more success going after Hammurabi for sure. Still, this city is not that well defended. He might be able to snipe Sparta if he can get over there more quickly. Now, what he should have done is he should have eroded this pile and then moved here. You know, he could have gone here and then here, and then he'd be attacking on the third turn. Instead, he has to take an extra turn to march there, which is just going to be more turns for um, defenders to reinforce. Still, um, two chariots. Remember, chariots don't get defensive bonuses. I don't think that's enough, though, even, even with that. It's just too many defensive bonuses stacked up here. I don't think, that's, I don't think this is going to work. I think this is too much. Uh, the chariots are irrelevant. So what is it? It's two swords, but there's going to be one built on the inner turn for the production queue. Two swords. So it'll be three swords, a spear, and an archer. I think that's probably enough, unless Shaka gets good dice rolls. It's possible he could get good. I mean, if he gets like two good dice rolls, it's possible, but I, I, I don't think that that's enough, for better or for worse. All right, so if you want to look at the diplomacy right now, so Gandhi does not like Stalin, does not like Shaka. Tough to buy him into war. Actually, he doesn't like anyone except Pericles. <laughs> Stalin does not particularly care for Gandhi or Isabella or Pericles. And he's only cautious, again, with the other two. Hammurabi and Isabella are more out of this, but wow, is he really? Remember how I, so remember how in the preview I said Izzy's going to found a religion. She's going to love whoever adopts her religion. She's going to hate everyone else. Minus four, minus three, minus three, minus three, plus two. Yep, that's Izzy. That's Izzy for you. And it's a good question why he's not building more phalanxes. So anyway, I do not expect this to succeed. I think this will get cut to ribbons. And that is indeed what happened. And it's just too many defensive bonuses. Did kill about half the stack, but just not enough to punch through, for better or for worse. For worse if you're Chaka. By the way, Stalin is now in last place. What does he do? Why is he taking so long to research calendar tech? I guess because it is a more expensive tech, but still. He only has one happiness resource. Anyway, he is not looking so great. It just seems like he got squeezed on land in this game, which is surprising, given that I think he had a really good starting position. But 
Oh, hello. What's this? Oh, this is going to attack the um, barbarians. He's sending this after the barb city, I'm pretty sure. Although I guess I could be wrong. I think that's going after one of these barb cities down here. Either that or it's going to attack Pericles as well, but that seems a little bit less likely. Still, Izzy, Pericles, Gandhi look like they're starting to take control of the game. Just better economies. Izzy with her religion and the other two with all their peaceful stuff. We'll see how long this Barb City can hold out over here. Hammurabi plotting war. I don't think Hammer was plotting war, but I could be wrong. Nah, he's not in not currently plotting war. How about Izzy? She's the score leader right now. Nope. Great general born. Yep, that's not a surprise. We're killing Shaka's stack. Shaka will build more. He'll be back with another stack. But uh yeah. Right now I'm actually tracking this uh so either Stalin is about to attack. Hammurabi, or more likely he's going to grab these barb cities. Yeah, he's targeting this barb city, and he should get it, too. All right, well, we're 100 turns into this game. Currently, Izzy is your leader. She's about to found her third religion of the game. And Gandhi is just doing what Gandhi does, sitting back and doing peaceful stuff, while Pericles fights off uh, Shaka for him. All right, let's take a quick look at our graphs. GMP, yeah, you can see the peaceful leaders have started to pull away. I mean, the economies of Stalin and Shaka are just starting to stagnate. And that's a very bad sign for them because once they start to fall behind in military tech, it's not gonna it's not gonna go well for them. All right. Production. Shaka is somewhat surprisingly tops in production. Everybody else is pretty close. Food. Everybody's pretty close on the food graph as well. I don't see like huge differences here yet. Power. There's that nice shark fin there when uh Shaka suicided his army into the, that city. Yeah, Gandhi is pretty well defended. The only one who's weak are Isabella and Hammurabi. They don't have much there. And then culture. Yeah. As far as research, Stalin on 30 beakers per turn. Gandhi 48. That's quite a bit more. 52 for Hammer. Is he 71? Okay, she is. At, at, well, this is really so. This is the power of her shrines, right? She's actually at ninety percent. Most of the other leaders are around like fifty percent. So fifty percent Hammurabi, Gandhi fifty percent, Stalin only forty percent. She's at ninety percent, running a minus five deficit. Pericles fifty, Shaka twenty, because <laughs> he has all those unit costs. Yeah, the power of two early shrines, thirteen gold per turn from the Church of the Nativity, making a big difference right now. And even this one's kicking in six. I mean, that's 20 extra gold per turn. That's a big deal. This early in the game, she's getting an awful lot of money. Also, continuing to plant more of these cities up here, I think it's just that she can afford them is the reason why she's done. I mean, she's just, gonna, she's just creating a tundra empire up here right now. <laughs> Locked out of the center of the map, but um, those cities do provide more commerce, if not much in the way of production. Yeah, Shaka's research is awful. I thought Stalin being in the middle of this rich floodplains valley would help offset that, but he was very, very slow to research uh, pottery and wheel, slower than I thought. He went all the way to ironworking before he got wheel and pottery, so that really stagnated his economy. Now researching hanging gardens. Anyway, so Shaka's going to come back for round two. You know he will, but he's not likely to have much more success this time around. Izzy is the most culture, Gandhi second. Hammurabi having more than Pericles is not expected, but <gasps> excuse me, that's probably because he built Stonehenge. This city is not that well defended. I think this probably gets captured by that stack. There's no walls and there's no hill defenses there either, so probably should get captured. Meanwhile, here comes the latest. Oh, Pericles building Great Lighthouse. That's kind of nice for him. Doesn't have a lot of coastal cities. One, two, three. Okay, only three coastal cities. But of course, he has to waste a lot of time fighting off uh, Lunatic Shaka, who I believe is going for construction. Slowly. Nope, going for calendar, not, not construction. All right, so there's a Barb City down. The Vile Russians. Yeah, she does not like Shaka or Stalin particularly. <laughs> So another barb city. Oh, okay. So that war just kind of ended without anything happening. That's good for Shaka. He that war was a disaster. Getting out of that war is quite good for him. Maybe now he has a chance to get this barb city down here. Meanwhile, Stalin just kind of grabbing a few extra cities. He grabbed that barb city there. He took the 
planted this city. He might have a shot at getting this one. Yeah, and that city had ivory, right? So a very valuable one to pick up. Plus one happiness in every city and the plant chance to build elephants. Yeah, very valuable barb city. Much more so than it would seem from its spot on the map. All right, so we go back to peace for the time being. Izzy is about to... Well, oh, whoa, 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 what? What? <laughs> what? Gandhi has declared on Pericles. What? What? <laughs> what was that? The single most peaceful leader in the game declaring on his religious ally? What? This has to be one of those 1% results. Okay. That just completely threw this game out of whack. <laughs> I, I'm just stunned. What were the odds of that happening? He just threw away his one ally on the map for no reason. Oh my god. Now Pericles is going to hate him when they should have been the closest allies imaginable. Yeah, look at this. This war spoils our relationship. You declared war. Now they're all the way at annoyed with one another. Oh my god. These two, like this had friendly written all over it. Oh boy. No, Shaka. I can't imagine Shaka bright. Well, I guess it's possible that Shaka bribed him and then peaced out before he could arrive. Hard to say. I don't think so though. So I don't think that he was bribed in because typically when the AI is bribed into a war, um, they don't have a stack ready. It's just like they'll declare war, but like there are no units on the border. When they move in a stack like this, it's usually because they were plotting war, usually. Maybe, maybe Gandhi felt pressure to expand. It's just, ah, that's so weird. But like, why would he not attack Stalin in that case? Anyway, that is one of the most bizarre wars I can remember in years of doing this contest. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Gandhi against Pericles. Wow. Holy cow. My goodness. Okay, well, that is a huge break for everyone else in the field because I thought Gandhi was in incredibly good shape to win this game. Now he's going to be wasting production against someone who he really, really needs as an ally in this field. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> well, let it, let it never be said that AI Survivor is not interesting to watch. All right, so, we, you know, we've seen a lot of fluctuation on the scoreboards. Now Shaka's all the way down at the bottom. And as bad as Stalin's position was earlier, he really has started to recover a bit. Calendar is a key tech for him because he's got all of these right here. Does he have another calendar resource? He has the one. But does he have a second one? I don't think he has a second one. No, but he has four spices, so pretty big deal. Um... Yeah, and his economy is starting to pick up a little bit, whereas Pericles and Gandhi, who had the best economies, are going to be tied up in warfare. I guess Izzy has the best warfare, or, or best warfare, best economy right now. She's just got another great profit. Let's. She's about to get a third holy city. Let's see if she tosses this in for yet another, um, another uh, shrine. She just founded Judaism. She might have merged that great profit. No, where is this great profit going? Where is this going? Will it turn around and like now head over to that city to found the shrine? I guess we'll find out. So yeah, no one should be able to take cities because no one has construction yet, but like Pericles is researching construction, so. Yeah, that is uh you're not you're not breaking through that. I know there's a lot of chariots, but you're not breaking through that. Where is that great prophet just out of curiosity? Here it is over here. Is it going over to build that shrine? I bet it is. Yep. AI almost always uses great profits for shrines if it's available as an option. And God just found it the philosophy. That has to be the philosophy religion, right? He must have burned a great scientist on that, right? Or a code of laws. Code of laws. Okay. It was too early for that. It was code of laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, note that Stalin has somehow made it back to second place after being in last earlier. This guy just, he's pretty cagey. He seems to have a nose for this. Anyway, let's just see if anyone's plotting war. So she's not. Stalin is. He would be better served by waiting until construction was done. But uh, all right, he's already in a war, so he can't be plotting. 
Hammurabi is not. Shaka probably is. It's Shaka. Of course he's plotting war. Who's he going after next? So he can't go after Pericles. I think he's still an enforced peace. So where he goes next is who the heck knows. All right. So this game's about to get more interesting because Stalin and Shaka are plotting war. Um, as I said, Stalin really should wait until he has construction finished. But I suspect he's likely targeting Isabella. And this would be enormously valuable if you were somehow able to capture it. But uh, he's not breaking through without that, without catapults, so. All right. Uh, anyway, Gandhi and Pericles, they're still facing off here, but Pericles just got construction, so now he can build catapults. Gandhi is kind of wandering around, though. Maybe he's picking a different target. Uh, looks like he attacked with some units and it didn't really work. Something like that. Gandhi just built double wonders. Okay, Gandhi. And Izzy built her third shrine of the game. <laughs> she has three of the game's four religions over here. Gandhi's on feudalism, yeah. So uh, once he has longbows, he's not going to be losing cities for a while. That said, he is still stuck on just the six cities. Wait, no. One, two, three, four, five. So he has seven cities. But yeah, he's been stuck on the seven cities for a little while. Just waiting to see where these guys are going to go next. Somehow this part... Oh, this time it's the other side. It's Hammurabi. Okay. This time it's the other direction. And this city has one chariot for defense. Well, Shaka may have found a softer target this time. That's our third war. I wanted to check the power. Yeah, this is maybe a better target. Also, Stalin. Slow down there, buddy. Uh, Hammurabi is last in terms of power, and this city has one chariot. <laughs> one chariot on defense. Now, if Stalin were to also slam in here, they would be looking pretty good. Wait, wasn't Stalin in second place like one turn ago? Boy, the scores are very, very close right now in this game. Well, to no surprise... That was captured with ease. So that Barb City was taken by Hammurabi up here just before Izzy was able to take it. But Hammer then uh, lost this city that is very vulnerable down here. All right. Gain a net change of zero cities for Hammurabi. And now Stalin's in second place again. This scoreboard is so tight right now. Really, really close, yeah. It is noteworthy that Isabella is a tick above everybody else, definitely. Um, although she's maybe not quite as strong as she seems because she is getting a lot of points from shrines and like two of the three shrines are not contributing that much. Also, these cities have no production. So like this city doesn't really contribute very much, but better than nothing, as I said. And then this barb city is still not being targeted by anyone. So really the big question is where is Stalin going to go? For the moment, it looks like Gandhi's stack, unsurprisingly, got shredded in Pericles territory. So where is Stalin going? He has a... I, I mean, I think he's rallying his units here, so he might be targeting Hammurabi as well, for all we know. Of course, he's got more units here, too, so it's hard to say. Again, he really would be better off waiting until he has catapults, but... It is the AI that can't really think ahead like that. Yeah, so we're just kind of waiting for Stalin to make the next move here. Yeah, the two-on-one -on -one wars are, are much more effective than other one-on-one uh, -on -one wars. 1v1, the AI tends to stall. Oh my god, where is the defense in this city? So here's the Shaka stack. No catapults still, just units. But Hammurabi, where's your, where's your defenders? Okay, he's got a spear and a bow right here. But the city has a sword, an axe, and a bowman. It's building a chariot. Like, where are the defenders? I think his main army was up here, capturing this barb city, Phrygian. <laughs> My picks are in shambles. Seems to happen to most of us most games. Open borders. Shall we just sign the open borders? All right, yeah, so they're moving up here. All right, that's the war I was expecting. Stalin to go after Izzy. It's probably not the right call for him. Probably would have been done better off to go after either Gandhi, who was in a two-front war, or Hammurabi. But that is the war I was expecting. All right. Fourth war. Everybody's in a war now. By the way, um, 
looks like Pericles is counter invading Gandhi now over here. So these are the top two on the scoreboard. There's no way Stalin's going to be able to capture anything, especially not Izzy's capital, not until he's able to build catapults. Um, if you wanted to quick check in on the power graphs, though, Stalin is the top power by a pretty good margin, but he's still two turns off on construction. So he's not going to be able to capture these cities unless he can take down the defense. I mean, maybe if he were like attacked up here, but he seems to be charging right for the capital, and that's not going to work. Not against 60% cultural defenses. That'll never succeed. So his, yeah, everybody wants me to join their wars. His best call is honestly just to walk around in circles until he can put catapults in his stacks, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Shaka did not succeed. Look at that. There's a Bowman with 0 0.2 health and a Bowman with 0 0.2 health. So it looks like he may have gotten some suboptimal um, dice rolls. Also does not have construction, so it's going to be kind of hard to capture cities without construction. Somehow these barbs are just like, yep, don't mind us. We're just going to build our cow pastures. Don't mind us down here. Babylon Unique Unit did help there for sure. All right, over here we have our first real siege of the game. Two catapults targeting the city with Vijay Anagara. So the Statue of Zeus is in there, which means that's going to be, well, should be in here. It's one turn off finishing. That's going to be pretty valuable if it gets captured. And a great general born. So this stack is still wandering around. Stalin did finish cat, uh, construction, so catapults. There's at least one or two of them in production. Also, this hanging gardens build that's random for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no masonry for Shaka. It's a little slow there. So did the Statue of Zeus finish here? Just out of curiosity. It did. This city, sh wow, that's a pretty good sack from Pericles. This city should fall once the defenses are down. That could be a pretty big swing over there. If Pericles can start taking territory from Gandhi, because remember, Gandhi has a number of wonders in his territory. Uh, over here, Stalin is setting up to attack, but there's no way he can punch through without catapults. That city's on a hill and it has 50% cultures. That's not going to work. We just want to see Stalin's army get slaughtered here. Maybe the odds are so bad he won't even attack. That would be the wisest thing if he was just like, yeah, this is not going to not gonna fly here. Well, Hanging Gardens is nice for him. Great scientist. And this... Oh, Gandhi. Look, Gandhi just hit feudalism. Just upgraded to longbows in there. Or maybe he actually had that for earlier. That could be... I don't know. Uh... Maybe. In any case, he did. There is a longbow, but one longbow is not going to be enough to save this city. I think this is going to fall between turns. Let's see. Oh, we stopped a bombard for another turn. He did just get feudalism. Okay. And again, there is a lot of catapults, and it looks like there was time for Gandhi to reinforce, so maybe not. Well, let's see. I think the Longbows might have gotten there just in time to save the city. Uh, Pericles did not, didn't even bother attacking. <laughs> Seville is like completely surrounded, but has, does not appear to have been attacked yet. Again, needs catapults uh, really badly to take down the defenses. The city will fall if um, the defenses come down, but as long as they're up, that city is pretty safe. Meanwhile, Shaka is preparing another stack to come back for round two. Seville's getting pillaged pretty good, but uh, not actually getting attacked yet, from what I can tell. These stacks seem to be mostly intact here. And there's a catapult in Novgorod that could presumably come forward and start bombarding. All right, over here, uh, yeah, the city held. BJ Anagara held a lot of damaged units, but not too many that are actually dead. So Gandhi held against Pericles, but... Two of them continuing to throw units at each other is not great for the rest of the field. Or, 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 excuse me, is good for the rest of the field. The two of them just throwing units at each other. Stalin seems to be consolidating his stack there. Or actually, no, it looks like he attacked and lost rather badly. Threw away a good number of units there. Where did he move that catapult that was over here? I guess he's... Yeah, a lot of great generals being born. 
Great General. Wow. How many Great Generals were born this turn? This turn was 175. <laughs> we had one, two, three, four Great Generals born this turn. It's a lot of Great Generals. It's a lot. A lot of Great Generals. Yeah, down here, so down here, the um, Shaka was rebuilding his stack after he lost his initial one trying to capture Borsippa. Neither one of them currently has a stack in each other's territory. That's why I wasn't watching there as much. Pericles just lost the stack against Gandhi over here. So I think right now the most likely place for action is on this front right now. Uh, by the way, Stalin unlocks elephants as soon as he finishes horseback riding. Yeah, that... uh. That attack by Stalin didn't work. He lost a fair amount of units there. Uh, as you said, needed catapults. Should have waited for catapults and then attacked. <clears throat> Would have taken the city if the defenses were down, but uh, he did not manage to do so. Let's see, did not go well. And like, look at the mutual bloodletting here between these two sides. They both just wasted a lot of production on each other there. Yeah, we just got that power check. And all right, well, shock is back again. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. He is finally on construction, but he has no chance of capturing that city without catapults. Just too well defended. I mean, he can kill some units, but he can't take the city, which is exactly what happened. He killed some units, but didn't take the city. Gandhi got another great general. Boy, this game turned into a bloodbath, didn't it? A lot of bloodletting on either side. <laughs> Very little progress being made by anyone here, but um, most of the major combatants have construction now, so we should start to see a little bit more action happening. Um, like the next time you see a Russian stack, it should have catapults in it, which will make a difference. I see some catapults wandering around in here. So uh, yeah, also that Barb City still hanging out down there. <clears throat> Got any building heroic epic in a border city? Maybe not the greatest place to build that. Where does he have? Yeah, building heroic epic in here. The longbows definitely are helping Gandhi, that's for sure. He's about to found another religion at philosophy. I will say this game is featuring a very slow tech rate at the moment because there's so much worrying and no one, I don't think, no one's financial in this game, right? Yeah, no one's financial. So the econ of all the major contestants is, uh, are just kind of crawling along. That's a nice wonder. He built it in the capital. Okay, nice wonder to have. But yeah, we haven't seen a city change hands in a little bit. All right, now uh, Izzy has turned around and she's attacking Stalin. The difference being that, uh, or she also does not have catapults. This city does not have any spears in it, though. So uh, this city actually could fall because for whatever reason, there's only four units in a border city. This stack is actually pretty crummy, but um, there's no spears in here. Like two spears would shut down this whole stack, but city could easily fall because the axes do so poorly against chariots. Let's see. Stalin might have been caught with his uh, pants down here. Oh, wait, but he does get to move first. Well, nope, not enough. Is he took the city off him. That is a city that never should have fallen. Never should have fallen for Stalin there. Very, very poor of him to lose a city there. Um, yeah, he should have been able to hold that city with ease, but uh, yeah, did not. Uh, he may be able to capture it back, but that's always a setback when that happens. Maybe not, though. Swords here. He's kind of wandering around with a stack over here. I'm a little surprised he let that happen. He only had four units in a city that was literally one tile away from the borders of the enemy. But uh, the AI does that sometimes. Sometimes they fail to defend properly. But uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty bad by Stalin. <laughs> that was pretty bad to let that happen. Two spears would have completely prevented that from happening. All right, well, he appears to have recaptured the city, but uh, it did lose some of its infrastructure. Actually lost quite a bit of its infrastructure. So that was recaptured then. So back to where it was, but back to where they were before. Um, Izzy can now also build catapults as well. Can she build elephants, though? She does have ivory, so she will be able to, but I think she needs horseback riding for that. No, she she can build elephants as well. She does have horseback riding. Okay. She's not building any at the moment. Why she's building chariots when elephants are a build option is beyond me. But um, 
it is an option and she's building Chichen Itza as well there. Okay, down here, Shaka, another attack, but again, he doesn't have catapults in his stack. He just got construction. He has not had time to build them yet. And over here, Gandhi and Pericles are still in a stalemate. Boy, I cannot believe that those two are fighting each other. Just finished first back riding this turn. Gotcha. So she didn't have a chance to change her build cues yet. A stalemated game. No one can seem to pull ahead. Look how close it still is. As Gandhi founds another religion. And the Great Library. I mean, Gandhi's culture is still slowly ticking up here. Is he got Chichen Itza? Busy turn. Gonna make it harder to capture cities. More bombardment needed. Yeah, this is just like a real mess here. Why are these catapults not protected by any units? In terms of power, we should just check in again real quick. Yeah, look at Stalin. He's really wasted his army. He had a big advantage and he just kind of wasted it. Now he doesn't have much of an advantage at all. Um, and I think, what is it? Shaka is actually behind. Oh, he, Shaka's probably going to lose this city to uh, Hammurabi. Maybe not. It is on a hill. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of City Raider swords attacking there. Yeah. Retaken by Hammer. Then retaken again by Shaka. Double capture, although it's more likely to get captured back again. Again, on the inner turn, most likely. We keep refreshing the map so we can get these <clears throat> to pop up. Back and forth, back and forth. When we were all talking in the Discord about how hard it was going to be to predict this game, I think this is why. I think it's a relatively even game. Like, just a hard one to predict because of how even this game is. That said, I, if you had told me that Gandhi was going to declare war on Pericles, I would have said this is a Stalin or a Shaka win in a heartbeat, but uh, it's not proving that way. All right, so once again, traded back. This time might be harder for Shaka to recapture, though. Have to, you have to refresh the map or else you won't get the city capture messages. But yeah, these poor cities of Optus, or Opus, they're in the middle of a major battlefield right now. The leaderboard has shuffled around so many times, I'm really having trouble knowing who's winning, who's losing. Um... I think Izzy and Gandhi are in relatively good shape, but it's just, it's hard to say because the game switches back and forth so much. All right, Izzy's back again. But uh, this time now, Novgorod's a little bit better defended. Gandhi will probably use this Great Prophet for a shrine. He does not have a Hindu shrine yet, so he'll probably use it for that. Also got a Great General. Here comes Pericles with a new stack, but I don't think that's going to be enough to break through. doesn't feel like it. feels like all these wars are stalemated at the moment. Everybody's very even, and nobody can break through. Well, if Izzy suicides this stack, she might have an opportunity. This might open up an opportunity. She just, all right, she just added a catapult to this stack, so she will start taking the time to bombard. Slowly starting the bombard. So this is like a major front between these two. Yeah, so he did build the shrine for Hinduism. 11 cities right now. Yeah, I've been trying to check the power graph periodically, but uh, like with all this unit trading, it can be hard. Yeah, everybody's very close in power. This is really unusual to have everybody this close. Feudalism is also a key tech as well. It makes it so much harder to capture the cities once longbows are behind them. So a number of people going for that. Even Hammurabi is like right there. Looks like this Shaka attack is not going to succeed here. So he took the one city, but now lost it. And the Barb City is still down here. <laughs> Does the AI ever counterattack a sieging force? Yes, actually. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Shaka tries to hit this stack. Or Stalin. There's another one for your counter. Yep, see, he just. Uh, Stalin just hit this sieging force and uh, just wiped it out. So Izzy just actually took a pretty big loss there. There's enough catapults in here then. Where else is that? This stack, if it heals and then just moves here, actually has a decent odds of capturing this city because it'll take down the defenses pretty fast. Even with Chichen Itza, it would go down relatively fast. That's only like three or uh, maybe like four or five turns of bombardment. And then this is the holy city. So it's with a shrine, so it's quite valuable. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, this is like the main axis of conflict over here. Oh, where are all the other units? 
I guess they're still healing here. This is probably not enough defense for this catapult stack. One war elephant, three axes. Those uh, catapults are just itching to get flanked away by horse archers. Anyway, over here, so Pericles has turned back for the moment. Most of the fighting has been in Gandhi's territory. Pericles has been the one invading. And it looks like Hammurabi is starting to now counterattack into Shaka's territory. But uh, it's still a little ways away. Biggest action right now continues to be on this front line here. Yeah, Izzy also has ivory. Okay. So I thought that this stack would go for Seville. Instead, they're wandering around in the desert here. This is the AI, of course. They're not always the best at uh, picking a target. Where is this stack going? Uh, nope, back up to the north again. Okay. Is Pericles suffering from Statue of Zeus? I would imagine that he is. Let's just check on that. Uh, he's got a little. He's got one unhappy face, although that's in a smaller city. His capital probably has more. A little bit. He's suffering a little bit from that. No, I didn't notice that Gandhi went free religion. It doesn't really matter that much until, as long as these wars are going on. I didn't notice that he went free religion. So that's from um, Shwedagan Paya, I guess. And Pericles. Okay, Pericles has a major attack incoming here. We should keep an eye on this. I don't think he has anywhere near enough to punch through, but we should at least keep an eye on this because he's got the defenses down again, the 3%. And we have a this stacking coming from Hammurabi, too, with some catapults. It looks like it just got hit, but wasn't enough to wipe the stack out. And okay, now Stalin is starting his own siege of Seville. Um, Seville is quite well defended, though. Let's see the end of this first, though. Let's see if Pericles has any success. I don't think he will, but we'll see. Nope. All his units just died. So that whole stack died, and it killed very little. <laughs> Poor Pericles. This war is not going well for him, is it? Tying down Gandhi a bit, but it's still not going very well for him. All right, so wow, yeah, this dropped from 75 to 57% in one turn. It's a lot of catapults. Not very many um, longbows yet either. So we do have like the mini siege down here. But I think I'd rather watch this between turns right now. Yeah, Isabella's on civil service. I think that this can take Seville. I, from what I'm seeing, I think this is enough to take it. Maybe not on one turn, because those horse archers are going to be useless on defense. The catapults are useless on defense. And the defenses are going to be down this turn. I'm not sure what happened. Did Stalin order the... I guess Stalin attacked without... But why would he have attacked without dropping the defenses down to zero? Apparently he attacked with 20% still on the defenses, which makes no sense. Why would he have done that? That's so weird. So... That is odd. <laughs> well, he's healing right now. Let's check in on the other conflicts. All right, so it looks like... The stack that Hammurabi had was wiped out. And is Gandhi counterattacking? It looks like he's trying to, but is not having much success. <laughs> Some kind of game here, right? It's just a total stalemate. Total stalemate. Everyone is so close. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Some kind of URL that went nuts in the chat. Anyway, this is probably the only city that has any realistic odds of being captured, but... Looks like this attack came up short, too. Someone needs to get out of this war and start teching ahead. <laughs> I don't think that's enough anymore. I thought if, I thought Stalin had a shot there before, but it looks like he's come up short. Like every other war seemingly has come up short here. Everybody just stuck in these endless fighting? <laughs> yep, looks like that attack has come. All right, Hammurabi and Shaka. Oh, wow. Why did Hammurabi give that city back? Bizarre. I don't know why the AI does that sometimes. All right, so Shaka did end up getting that city out of that. Weird. Yeah, I didn't think that Seville would hold either, but I don't think that Stalin attacked as in like the correct way. He like attacked with some of his units, but not all of them, while there were still 20% defenses, which made no sense. I don't know quite why he was doing that. So anyway, we do have a finally had an end to one of these wars. So 
The fact that Hammurabi is now out of conflict and Shaka is out of conflict means that both of them are now free actors to jump into another war. By the way, look at this, the minus eight. This war spoils our relationship. So Shaka, he could attack pretty much anyone. He's very unlikely to attack Stalin, although he could. Could attack Gandhi, could attack Pericles, could attack anyone else. Pericles would probably be enough to cause Pericles to collapse. And then um, Hammurabi does not like Stalin, does not like Shaka, loves Isabella. So he'd attack one of these two, almost certainly. No, I, I think Stalin attacked, but he, I think he didn't attack with everything. I think it was like a clumsy attack, basically. All right, yeah, so power still, it looks like Hammurabi had a bad loss recently, just like Pericles had a bad loss. Look at this. All right, well, on we go. <laughs> Both, all the combatants continuing to toss units at each other endlessly. <laughs> now Shaka is in second place on score. Shaka is just loading up for his next war. Maybe now Shaka will finally take this barb city down here. And over here, Gandhi has an attack stack. Let's see where this one goes. I guess it would go for Mycenae. Yep. I don't think Gandhi will have any more success attacking either, though. Both of these border cities are on... They're Both these border cities on hills and are just really dug in. Someone's going to need to get to the next generation of military tech, I think, to have any real success at punching through. All right, now it's swung back, and now Izzy is looking to go on the offensive. It's like right this little corridor right here is just constant, constant bloodbath on each side. <sighs> One of the most violent games I've seen. Yeah, not only that these two are at war, but they utterly refuse to make peace. It's been a war to the death between them from what we can see. Uh, Shaka, I think, is finally going to take this Barb City, which is a, a very strong city. And he did pick up plus one city in that war, so I think he has the most total territory right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'll get him to ten cities. Pericles is on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Gandhi's on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, Hammurabi's on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is he one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? But again, some of them are. These tundra, these very questionably strong uh, ice balls. I mean, like, that's worth a lot of commerce, but one production per turn, not contributing a ton there. And then Stalin has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, everybody, so part of the reason why these wars are so even, they're all 1v1s. They're all, like, the same amount of cities. No one is, like, a decisive edge in terms of size or tech from, for the moment. So that's partly why this is so close. All right, so GNP. Gandhi has the pulled ahead here, but again, a fair bit of that is culture. We'll look at the actual research rate in a minute. Production is still close for everybody. Food is still close, except Shaka seems to have gotten a jump from getting out of that war. We looked at the power. Stalin is first, but has lost a fair bit. Culture, espionage is not really relevant. All right, Stalin is 100 beakers per turn. Gandhi is 183. That's quite a bit more. Hammurabi is around Stalin. Isabella, 138. Pericles, 145. Shaka, oof, 58, okay. He's running a slight, uh, he can run higher than that on the slider, though. He's running a slight surplus, so he could tick that up. Also continuing to run the espionage slider for who knows what reason. Um, he should be able to capture this city and get some capture gold, though, you would think. Yeah, he's definitely going for the Barb City. So Gandhi's definitely the most advanced. Stalin in last on tech, that's not great for him. <laughs> Pericles in second. Isabella in third, Stalin and Shaka trailing on research. Shaka researching currency uh, is not great. It's not not what you want. Um, Izzy is now sieging up this city. So she took all the defenses out with her catapults. So she might be able to run over this city again as she took it before. The latest attack by Gandhi has failed. So these two are still in a complete stalemate. And we have a chance that this city flips again. I think it probably does, unless Stalin can reinforce. He does have some, he does move first in turn order, so he does get the chance to reinforce. Just hanging on, clinging to life. One chariot with two health. The only thing still holding on here. And then down here, we've got uh, the Barb City potentially falling. 
all these elephants just wandering around in Nowheresville. Oof. How did no how is Novgorod still standing? Is he turned around and walked away? <laughs> anyway, the uh, defenses were just taken out here. There's actually two workers. That would actually be quite nice for um, Shaka to take those two workers as well. How did he not capture that city? How did he not capture that? Oh well. And it's still a close fight here on Novgorod. Shaka, top score. Anyway, that city will definitely fall now. There we go. Shaka taking over the score lead. Oh, and Izzy and Stalin made peace. Did they change? Any cities change hands? No. No cities changed hands. All right. Well, that was a huge, humongous waste of time for both sides. So the only ongoing war now is the least likely war, the Gandhi-Pericles War. All right. Someone's going to intervene in this Gandhi-Pericles War. Izzy got Yakuts. Where was that? Wait, where did she get? Oh, she got that city there. Okay. Huh. Okay, you're right. So you did take a city there. Gotcha. I missed that. It was this one down here. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say that went well for Stalin, considering he went in the, into that war with a big power edge. Just think if Stalin had chosen to attack, say, Gandhi instead, which he could have done. Would have been very different. All right, well, now that frees up all these participants to join new wars. Shaka is almost certainly out. Yep, already plotting war. Hammurabi. Shaka's already plotting war, so who's he going after? Oops, one second. Do, 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 do. Shaka going after. I would expect it's Gandhi or Pericles because he's unhappy with each of those. He doesn't like either of them. Um, if Shaka went plowing into Pericles right now, that would probably be it for the Greeks because they're likely the weakest already. So we'll keep an eye on that. He really should go for Pericles, but who knows? He's Shaka, right? Who knows? All right. Hey, all of our wars came to an end. And just like that, the world was back to peace. hundred and So that was like 50 turns of immense warfare for everybody. <laughs> So now everybody's a free actor to go back into more conflict again. So Shaka is narrowly the score leader right now, although I think Izzy is in a better overall shape. If Izzy, Izzy just needs to get more territory. She's picking up one city is nice for her. This would have been a big hit if she had been able to take Novgorod and then sign peace. All right, so... We know, yeah, Gandhi building Sistine is good for his cultural victory and potential. Pericles just got a great engineer, so he'll probably use that on a wonder. So right now we're just kind of waiting until the next conflict breaks out. Because this continues to be a very even game. Yeah, so he just rushed Notre Dame. Well, that didn't take very long, did it? <laughs> Didn't take very long. It didn't attack with a whole lot of units either. Just a handful. So that is war number five on our counter. So once again, Shaka the Wrecking Ball comes back. Where's most of Shaka's units? Just out of curiosity. They're not over on that eastern border. Shaka has returned to number one in power. Look at all the dips in the power graph over there. <laughs> well, we'll see if this is enough. Well, it's once again another 1v1 war, so I would expect it to stalemate, honestly. Pericles has been keeping up in tech reasonably well. It's more like it does anyone else jump in on this conflict. And yeah, here comes Pericles. Pericles is the one going to cross the border first here. And that is, as we said, a biggie in terms of uh, cultural victory. Very useful because the AI always runs a whole bunch of specialists. Is Stalin beelining rifling? I think it's too early to check. He wouldn't be. He wouldn't have selected rifling this early. It's too early. 
Yeah, Hammurabi could, of course, jump in here, but he's not plotting war at the moment. Stalin is not plotting war either. His he's not. And Gandhi, I mean, you wouldn't think that he's not. That no, looks like this is a 1v1 war for the time being. So we'll just keep an eye on these two combatants then. <laughs> well, that city uh, of Shaka's on the border lost all of its cultural defenses in one turn. Does not appear to be that well defended. Shaka, where's all your units, man? Did you just declare war on like a whim here? Heracles might actually be the one taking territory here. And he might be able to take this city. Shaka's not defending it as well as he should have. Yeah, wow, okay. That was not what I was expecting, but okay. <laughs> what was that? Okay, Shaka. Uh, here's his army. Why didn't he wait until this army was on the border to declare war? Okay. <laughs> yeah, seriously, the pikes, right? Doing work. Or I don't think he has pikes. Does he have pikes? I didn't think that he had engineering yet, or am I wrong? Maybe he picked it up when I wasn't paying it. No, he does have pikes. Engineering tech. You guys are right. Well, <laughs> Shaka was first in score for a little bit. I think he's going to take this city right back, but that's still a, kind of an embarrassing loss. He's got a lot of units over here. God, he gets yet another religion. There's double holy cities there on the border. Yep, so that conquest was short-lived, but still. So kind of embarrassing. Look, it lost all of its infrastructure. The only thing that survived the double capture was the granary. Not great. That city had a lot of buildings in it, and now they all have to be rebuilt. As I said, not great. Yet despite that, Shaka is still tops in score for what for whatever that means. Is this game has been like a carousel as far as um, <laughs> who's on top of the scoreboard? All right, no one else seems to be plotting war again. Gonna be hard to take those cities now that they have castles too. This is an era that's very bad at up for offensive warfare. Once everybody builds castles, it just takes forever to bombard anything. All right, Stalin is apparently tops in power again. Pericles well, came out not not the better for wear in that particular trade over the long run. Worst enemy of Isabella, as expected. So Gandhi has pulled ahead of Izzy in score, just barely. Still such a tight game here. Really close. I feel like, I feel, really feel like basically everyone could still win this if things break right for them. I think Pericles would be harder because he's lost his natural ally in Gandhi. But for everyone else, I think you can still come up with a plausible path to them winning. <clears throat> I don't think Stalin's plotting. We just checked him last turn. Yeah, he's not plotting war at the moment. It's actually fallen behind a little bit in tech. So waiting, building up and waiting for an opportunity is probably not the worst thing for him. More great generals. <laughs> so many, we're gonna run out of the names for great generals in this game, which happens sometimes if there's a lot of fighting. Instead of giving a name, it'll just say great general has been born. <sighs> yeah, this one just keeps going and going and going. I want to tell like the story. I want to tell the narrative of this one, but the real narrative has just been um, everyone is still locked in a stalemate. <laughs> With like, I think Gandhi and Izzy are like a little bit ahead, but it's it's close. Gandhi did drop a Tundra City up here a little while back. Stalin's the only one who hasn't, which is ironic because the only place where there's an actual fish resource is here. It's like the one place it would be valuable to put one down, and that's the one place no one has put a city down. It's way up there. Anyway, just continuing to watch these guys, but uh, not a lot of action here. And no one else is apparently plotting war for the moment. Shaka's still... Uh, that's not anywhere near big enough to capture territory. Not unless he consolidates into a bigger stack than that. Well, Shaka didn't even have engineering. I thought he had that. Whoops. Gandhi's still building the wonders. 
So he has three cities at over 2,500. Pericles is way behind. And then Izzy actually had some cities that were looking decent for cultural, but Gandhi is definitely pulling ahead in that race. Everybody always asks. So here we go. Here is, this is a, yeah, this is a pretty credible stack. Now the problem is by the time these catapults knock down the walls and that, yeah, the, the walls in the castle, it's going to, the city will have uh, like right now the city has what, like six or seven defenders. It'll probably have like triple that by the time those defenses can get knocked down. Cause it takes for, oh, actually he got 22% off in one turn. That's more than I was expecting. He must have a lot of catapults in this stack. He has 12 catapults. Okay. That, yeah, that is a lot of catapults. Gandhi jumping up into the score lead. Not giving out our world map. Gandhi not plotting war. Is he not plotting war? Stalin not plotting war. How about Hammer? This will be the perfect time. Oh, Hammer's plotting war. Really only one person he could be going for. It's almost certainly Shaka. Right when Shaka looks like he might be able to take some territory, could get dragged back again by Hammurabi. It almost has to be Shaka. Shaka's the one who attacked him and all that. Is he on guilds? Gandhi on paper. All right, so defenses are down at Nasus. Let's see if it's enough to capture this. Uh, that's a lot of units. I think it is, but let's see. I would say yes, if I had to guess. Oh, there it is. Okay, I was like, wait, one catapult left? I was going to count that as a successful prediction if there was one catapult left. So Pericles just lost a ton of units in that. Uh, most of Shaka's attackers survived. That was a pretty bad turn for Greece. Uh, the, their real hope right now is that the Babylonians come pounding in from the other side, which is probably going to happen, let's be clear. No, guilds don't... Yeah, guilds do not give Spain conquistadors. They did in um, non-expansion Civ IV, but in uh, expansion Civ IV and Beyond the Sword, it's uh, conquist conquistadors are Karasir replacements. Yeah... Crazy game. So Shaka once again takes the lead and score. I just don't know if he's going to be... I don't think he's going to have time enough to run over Pericles before he gets attacked on the other side. Anyway, people wanted to see the shark fin from Pericles, and yeah, that's why we called it the shark fin. Shaka lost basically nothing. Pericles lost like a third of his military. That was pretty, pretty rough. Of course, Hammurabi is way up here on power too. So yeah. That knocks the Greeks down to just six cities left. I think Shaka would be able to take them over, but don't think he's going to get the 1v1 for much longer. <sighs> but meanwhile, Gandhi just continues to build, which is what he wanted. Still building. Has not, uh, has not been troubled by Stalin at all. Has only been troubled by his own aggression in this game. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep an eye on it over here when an attack might be coming from Hammurabi. We'll see it sooner or later if he's plotting war, which it looks like he is. Oh, well, that was not a war we were talking. Stalin coming back for round two. I don't know if this is going to go any better than the first one, but where is... Oh, here's his main stack down here. He's trying to get the city he lost back again, Yakuts. All right. That means, uh, you know, I thought that Stalin and Shaka might be able to work together a little bit better in this game. They have not really been on the same page at any point in time. Of course, I also was hoping that Stalin and Izzy would work together. Instead, they've been at each other's throats the entire game. <laughs> Why optics? You don't have a coast. Yeah. Seriously. All right. So in terms of the power, Stalin is higher on the power graph, but uh, he kind of needs to sucker punch Izzy here. Uh, the, the difference, though, is Izzy can build knights and S Stalin cannot, and that's a pretty big edge. So Stalin has to get the jump on with his initial military, and it looks like he's in position to lose Novgorod. Well, the good news is 
AI still foolishly decided to stop and bombard instead of just attacking. This city would have fallen if they had just attacked. Um, well, the city's all catapults. This should fall here. There's no no defenses here. No like actual defenders, yeah. So that's good for Stalin if you're on if you have him like I do. Him getting uh, one of his previous cities back. But now he needs to run up here and break the siege of Novgorod. If he wants to succeed here. Alright, so Shaka is pushing on to the next city, to Athens. Oh boy. Hammurabi, if you don't attack soon, Pericles is going to die. Or if you attack someone else. Imagine if Hammurabi was like, you know what, I'm going to go attack Isabella right now. Never mind. He can't. He's actually friendly. He can't, but that would be funny. Or if he went after Stalin, no. Pretty sure he's going after Ashaka, but still sitting on the sidelines for right now. Yeah, this is a... Uh, Shaka could have his whole army drawn deep into Greece, and like, if that's when the Babylonians come over the border. And, oh no, it is Stalin. Oh boy. Wow. Okay, good news for Shaka, bad news for Stalin. Ooh, there's the 2v1. We haven't seen a single 2v1 war the entire game yet. That's not the 2v1 that you want if you've got Stalin. Yeah. All right. I wonder if he was bought into this war, because, like, this is not the main stack moving across the border. It's, like, a couple of individual units. I wonder if Izzy bought him into this war, because I, I suspect that that plotting was directed at Shaka. This might have been a bought into the war situation. Anyway. Yeah, Stalin now needs to get out of this war ASAP. <laughs> Or one of the two wars. This city is still not being defended. Yeah, Stalin is in deep doo-doo right now. In that two-front war. Uh, over here, Shaka is now cleared to keep pushing into Greece. Yeah, stacks at the southern city. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's down here. Oh! Thank you. Um, thank you for that, Pop King. Yeah. It's down here, okay, and this is crucial to Stalin because if he loses this, he loses his source of ivory and he can no longer build um, no longer build elephants. Okay, so yeah, it was, okay, so this was plotting, but it was plotting, the plotting was to go after the former Barb City. That, oh boy, Stalin, oof. That is not good for the Russian leader. <laughs> not what he wanted at all. As Gandhi discovers liberalism. Yeah, things have, events have not shaken out the way that I think they needed to for Stalin to have a strong game. Just one of those things. Meanwhile, Athens is down to about half of uh, about half of its culture. Novgorod, as I said, is not looking so uh, looking kind of shaky up here too. So Shaka is making progress right now, but long term his situation if Stalin goes under would not be good. And once again, Gandhi just what's Gandhi doing? Just building, building, building is what he wants. This is this is a Gandhi result that he really is looking for. I know, I'm pretty sure I upgraded the uh, updated the counter, right? Pretty sure I didn't miss it. I think seven is correct. If people think it's eight, then let me know. It should be eight? Okay. I thought I got it, but maybe I missed it. People say it should be. No. Nope. Oh boy, people are now people are unsure if it should be seven or eight. Normally the chat is all over this. I thought I I thought I got that. I think it's seven. We can check the event log. Just to see the recent ones. So we had Stalin declared on Isabella, Hammurabi declared on Stalin. So we had two recently, seven, right? I thought I got them both. I thought I got them both. Yeah, Shaka declared three times, Gandhi once, Stalin twice, Hammurabi once. That sounds right. And that's seven. Okay, I think we're right on seven. I think we're right. I think we're correct. You can always check after the game, too. No, no worries, no worries. I was just like, I was pretty sure that I had gotten that latest war. Okay, anyway, so why don't we keep an eye on this, because this is 
an attack that looks imminent, and that's a pretty big stack there from Shaka. He has 41 units on that tile. Probably one more turn to bombard, and then another turn to attack after it's yeah, down to 10%. Oh, and there's another stacking coming behind it, too. Meanwhile, Hammer now has uh, these units freed up. Uh, don't know, Stalin. I don't know that you should be off attacking in this situation when you've got to defend this city up here. Still, we might see this uh, capital city for Pericles getting taken here. Oh, there it goes. Still surrounded by enemy culture, but that's a pretty harsh blow there to lose your capital. Let's see where Stalin... Oh, Shal St Shaka immediately adopts police state. Okay, buddy. Because he picked up the pyramids there and got Sankor as well. Well, we'll see where he goes from there. I don't think Pericles can recover from that. Losing your capital is almost impossible to recover from. So he's down to just five cities remaining. Okay, in the meantime, we have sieges over here. By the way, Gandhi, content just to sit out for right now. Shaka also going for guilds so that he can get, um, whatchamacallit, uh, knights in play. Yeah, this attack on Borsippa looks like it was cut up. It looks like um, Hammurabi hit Stalin's main stack with his stack and managed to win it. Because that Stalin stack is gone now. And this city is very slowly getting chipped down by two catapults. Slowly. This stack should be mostly healed and then it'll move on to its next target once it's healed up. I wonder what, where this is going next. Where is Shaka going? The logical thing to do would be to go here, but it would have been more logical to go to Sparta before going straight on to Athens. So it looks like he's going to Sparta. Barda is my guess, based on what I'm seeing there. Did lose a lot of catapults in making that attack, though. Worst enemy of Gandhi, war with Hammurabi, worst enemy of Hammurabi, war with Isabella, worst enemy of Isabella. <laughs> it's, uh, not, it's not a good place to be. <laughs> not a good place to be. That many people disliking you. Shaka's just got like a swarm of yellow on the mini-map. How many catapults? He does not have a lot of catapults up here. Oh, he has, a, he has some. Still consolidating them into one stack over here. Going to take a little while to bombard the defenses here. Yeah, he only got 8% that turn. So that's like 10 turns or so if he can't get more siege units up there. He has two trebuchets up here. That would speed up. Meanwhile, here comes the main Hammurabi stack over here. Yeah, Hammurabi's starting to look better. Starting to look a little bit better, Hammurabi. should have mentioned, when he got this Barb City a while ago, that allowed him to plant this Barb City over here, which is further west than I think he would have gotten in some of these games. Still think this is probably Gandhi's game to lose, though, because Gandhi's just doing his... He's like, I'm just going to continue building my uh, cathedrals everywhere, and then we'll turn the slider on and go from there. Yeah, bad luck for Pericles to get targeted by Gandhi, certainly. <laughs> I don't think anyone expected Pericles to get slammed into by a Gandhi stack. Just a random thing to have happen. Anyway, yeah, so that's ongoing there. We've got this siege just starting here. Unfortunately, this stack only has four catapults, so that's going to be kind of slow. And up here, this attack should start in a turn or two. We should probably see if Novgorod holds or if it gets captured. For Stalin's sake, he really needs that city to hold. What are we at there? 64% there. Cultural Plains Cal victory. I, I think Gandhi is the most likely to win from this position. But as I said, there's still a fair bit that can happen. Shaka could always attack him after this, and if he grabs one of the three legendary cities, then that would pretty much end that. Oh! Or Shaka could randomly make peace with Pericles for no clear reason. Okay. That's certainly an odd time. It looked like he was winning that war pretty heavily. Oh, and yeah, and his stack is stuck in Athens, yeah. Or it's on this tile. Most of it's on this tile here. 
Jets. <laughs> yeah. Now he's stuck there. Why would he have signed Peace there? He had knocked Sparta down to halfway. He easily could have... Uh, feels like he easily could have taken Sparta. And then that would have freed up some of this culture that's crippling him right now. So he took Athens. He got, the, I guess, the pyramids out of it. But otherwise, got did not get a lot out of that. <laughs> well, Athens can't flip because it was captured. If a city is captured in war, it can't flip back. But, yeah, certainly odd, to say the least. Anyway, Shaka can go back into war again. But, as you said, a lot of his army is trapped in a completely useless spot on the map now. And this looks like the beginning of the end for Stalin. Um, Novgorod just got captured and there's another, we know there's another stack down here that's besieging this city. So I think this is the beginning of the end for Stalin. Stalin first to die. <laughs> Very much first in play. He's in the driver's seat for first to die. He's in a 1v2 war and he's down at the bottom of the uh, uh, scoreboard right now. So he's definitely in the driver's seat as far as being first to die. I don't really see much chance Stalin can turn this around at this point. In a rough, in pretty rough shape right now. And that is 200 turns into this game. A very unusual game. Well, he's not hasn't been first to die yet. Hasn't been first to die yet, but uh, I'd say he's the favorite at this point to be first to die. Gandhi just did the big swap into free speech and uni suffrage. So that's going to tick up his uh, cultural rate, to be sure. So keep an eye on... This is his third cultural... I mean, he's already got 259. He has not turned on the slider yet. He can probably win a cultural victory around turn 275, turn 280 from here, if he does not get pulled into another war. All right, so let's just see if shock Is he plotting another war yet, just out of curiosity? He... You magnificent man. He certainly is. <laughs> we have enough on our hands right now. Well, he can't go to war with Pericles. He can't because he's in enforced peace. So it's probably Hammurabi. I guess it could be Gandhi as well. <laughs> man, this guy likes to go to war uh, anyway. And he has most of his army is trapped over here. So unless he gets open borders with uh, Pericles, which I cannot imagine Pericles would give him open borders given what they've been through. What, how does Pericles feel about him? Uh, minus nine. I don't think he's going to give him open borders. Most of his army is stuck over here. 49 units. Yeah, he has 50 units st stuck over here in Athens. But he, he'll just build another army and he'll probably throw it. I suspect Hammurabi is his target. Gandhi continues to get a free pass in this game. He's building Taj Mahal. Um, yeah, Gandhi's still getting a free pass right now. <laughs> So right now we're keeping an eye on Stalin in the 1v2. Um, we should do a quick check on uh, our graphs because it's turn 200. Okay, score is still pretty close, except Stalin's score has been decreasing here. GNP, Gandhi, it looks like he set off a culture bomb. Um, either that or the free religion, or excuse me, the free speech plus, what was the other civic he swapped into? Uh, it was free speech plus... Something else. Either that or he got a huge econ boost. He probably detonated a golden age. Or no, he maybe you know, he maybe went a golden age. That could be it. Production. Yeah, there's the golden age from Shaka, the golden age from Hammurabi. Food. Shaka still is the lead there. <clears throat> you can see how Stalin's really been falling off. Especially over the last hundred turns. You know, he was one of the leaders here. Wow, Shaka had a humongous food lead before. Power. Shaka is the clear leader. Oof. Stalin not doing so great there. The 1v2 is pretty rough. And then culture. Oh, Stalin had... Wait, uh, wait, what? <laughs> that was random. Okay. Babylon captured a city there. Okay. Sure, we can see research rates. Stalin 192, Gandhi 452, Hammurabi 285, Izzy 206, Pericles 287, Shaka 113. Yikes. Shaka is not, not a good researcher. Not good at researching, you guys. <laughs> we'll look at the tech trees in a little bit. I don't want to do too much time on the various uh, menus, but it is something we should try to look at.
in a little bit. Hammurabi's Northern Legion. Yeah, what the heck? Seemly for a young man killed in battle to lie right, Observer Civ discovers bronze, bronze working, which always happens on turn death, 201. All things appear fair. Some of these AIs are getting closer to um, rifling tech, which will be like the next big military jump for whoever gets it. This city is absolutely doomed, though. Unless Shaka comes flying in here off the top rope in a few seconds. He's building more knights again. Another city captured. So it definitely looks like Stalin's being partitioned between Spain and Babylon right now. Um, these are the most valuable cities right here. Who gets these two is going to be the most significant. Like this city here is not bad, but it's not as strong. So obviously that one got taken by Hammurabi. I think Izzy's score is being held back a little bit by the fact that she has all these Tundra Ice Ball cities. <laughs> Alright. Only three Russian cities remaining at this point. Definitely, if Shaka is going to fly in here, needs <laughs> help sooner rather than later, if that's going to be the case. Probably too late at this point, though. I think it's just too late for Stalin. Things have not broken in his direction. Gandhi's going to get the Taj Mahal, too. Looks like Izzy's going to get the liberalism tech, though. Or was that already claimed? Did somebody else take liberalism, just out of curiosity? I didn't think anybody else had it, though. Stalin definitely doesn't have it. Oh, Gandhi does. That's right. He's in free speech. Of course he took it earlier. He's in free speech, so he had to have taken it. As he builds another sh shrine. A little late on that night bot. A little late to put in a prediction for game one. I know that that's automated, but uh, yeah. So who's going to get St. Petersburg? This is just, you know, pure RNG. Which of these leaders gets this? Is this the season where Stalin... Pull I think he has enough points banked that he's set for pool one for quite some time. Kind of just got... Uh, there's Gandhi's Taj Mahal. As he continues to rush out more um, cathedrals for cultural stuff. Yeah, still unclear who's going to be the one who actually gets this. Oh no, Shaka just decided to go back to war again. Okay, I don't know why he bothered to sign peace then, but okay. I guess he just waited until he could declare war a second time, and then he did. <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. And everybody just continued to ignore Gandhi, who continued to chase after culture. This game's gone exactly the way Gandhi wanted. Uh, no one has attacked Gandhi even one time, even though he was the worst enemy of three different civs at one point. Just trying to inflate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this time we do have to in inflate the war counter. That is correct. We do have to tick that up to eight. Thank you, guys. Right now, I'm just curious who's going to get this city, because there's a stack of both Hammurabi and Isabella right here. The, um, so Hammurabi moves first. Oh, there's one catapult left. Oh, boy. I guess Hammurabi gets it. Oh, wow. What a swing in this game. Izzy misses this city because one catapult survived with one health, 1.3 health. That's the difference between the two of them capturing this. Um, now, Stalin will get to move first, but um, Hammurabi moves before Isabella. So this will be uh, going to the Babylonians. Oh no! Okay, wow. I guess he moved in. I guess Stalin reinforced with enough units that um, Hammer wasn't able to take it, and Izzy ended up doing so. Or he pulled his stack back. Okay. Huh. Still, that came. That was very close. Um, yeah, it's significant in terms of how strong these two are in the. Well, that that's not helpful. How strong they are in like the post-war environment. This be up here is going to be annoying for Izzy. <laughs> But uh, so far, she's gotten most of the spoils. So Hammer got the Barb City, which was nice. And then he took this one. Isabella has gotten this city, which she had, but then lost and then recaptured Novgorod, St. Petersburg. I'd have to say she's gotten more thus far. And then Moscow's another big prize. But uh, this was a very valuable city, too. 
with the hanging gardens. Anyway, let's check in on what Stalin, or not Stalin, Shaka. We can add another one to the counter. Uh, looks like a bombardment on Corinth, which is the new Greek capital. And down it goes. So now it's a race as far as who's first to die between Heracles and Stalin. I think Stalin will not last as long. I think Stalin will fall first. And then we should be down to four leaders relatively soon. So we'll probably do, I'll try to do, if we do get down to four leaders, I'll try to do a state of the game after that. But for right now, we're kind of at the tail end of these campaigns. Let's we'll keep an eye on them. God, look at Gandhi on scientific method. Shaka going for chemistry. Pericles dying. Shaka, Stalin dying. <laughs> Gandhi's like, nope, nope, everybody just leave me alone. I'm perfectly content here. Very, very content to just hang out here. Yeah, he's already over 10,000 culture in all three cities. This is his slowest, and he has not... I mean, if he turns on the slider, he can probably get this up to five or six hundred culture per turn. And that would drop it down to like 60 turns remaining. We'll just keep it. Just keep an eye out for if Gandhi goes uh, full culture on the slider, which I expect him to do in the near future. Even if not, he still wins in a hundred turns, even if he doesn't do anything. Less than that, because he'll be continuing to pick up more culture. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Less than that, because he'll continue to pick up more culture as he goes along. Um... I don't, and the tech pace in this game is so slow. We're only in like early Renaissance and it's turned 216. We've had tanks rolling around in some of the other games by now. Um, this is a very slow tech pace. So it's hard to see anyone else being able to win by domination or spaceship before Gandhi can win by culture. That's true. He is on the golden age. That is true. That is true. Still not that, not that different though, I have to say. Didn't really change that much. Okay, we don't really have another attack on Stalin just yet, so we'll keep the focus over here in Greek territory. Oh, this will... I, I, I don't think we, this game will end with no one dead. I think that we have two leaders that are in the process of dying right now. And the pace of conquest has been pretty fast down here. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Gandhi, wow. Just wanting to tick up that war counter. <laughs> Gandhi to, to two offensive wars from Gandhi in this game. Very unusual. What kind of personality did he roll for this game? I know there's some variation from game to game in terms of personality, but geez, okay. I guess Gandhi just wanted to grab a city for himself. Rostov over here. <laughs> Gandhi, you are a little bloodthirsty today. Must be feeling strong now. So Shaka's in good shape for the moment. I do think his diplomatic position is pretty precarious, though. Once once Stalin's gone, his allies are non-existent. All right, so we have three Greek cities left, and then we have India attacking up here, and there's three three Russian cities left, three Greek cities. But I think that with three v one against Stalin, he's much more likely to collapse first between these. Gandhi the opportunist, yeah, seriously. All right, so once again, it's going to be a big dice roll as far as who gets Moscow, which is a pretty big prize. Got some nice stuff in there. Um, and this could be pretty significant because if Gandhi takes a first, Hammurabi and Izzy are very much in competition for that second place spot. So who gets this? Pretty, pretty noteworthy as Shaka's heading towards his next target there. Gandhi is attacking with axes, so we're pretty much just waiting to see who's going to get this. No one's going to make a move until the defenses are bombarded down. It's pretty much just a dice roll. Yaroslav is still going to hold out over there. By the way, did anyone think Kabarabi was going to do this well? He's right in the mix at the moment. All right, what's left in here? This is probably captured by Hammurabi, but I was wrong before, so... Wait, where did Izzy's stack go? Okay, I guess it's definitely captured by him, because Izzy's stack seems to have disappeared. 
might have all attacked and ended up not making it throw. So it looks like this is a Hammurabi, and that's pretty significant considering how close he and Izzy are in score, who seizes control of this spot. Izzy taking that probably would have jumped her ahead of Hammurabi and score. Instead, he pulls further ahead. It's another one of those things that's just based on the turn order. All right, so down here, Shaka's knocking on the doorway. Sparta. He's actually been taking down the defenses pretty fast. Still takes a while against the castles, though, when all you have is catapults and trebuchets. Remember how long Gandhi and uh, Pericles fought over this border? And then Shaka's like, no, I'm actually just going to take over these cities. Thank you very much. Uh, it looks like that siege at Rostov got broken off for whatever reason. Hammurabi is going to be first to rifling? Yeah. All right, there goes Sparta. But there's still two more cities to mop up over here. I mean, Shock is picking up a lot of territory. He might be in good shape for a potential second. And, oh, wow, okay. Hammurabi, Hammurabi and Shaka are um, pretty close here. Look how close the score is. 2387, 2386, 2373. Jeez. And there's this one city over here. <laughs> like, how did Hammurabi get this far? <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's true. Gandhi might swallow up some of these cities because of his culture. That's very true. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets several of these. Yeah, Hammurabi almost has rifling tech. It's close. Shaka can't walk through Gandhi's territory, so he has to walk this roundabout route. When Pericles goes to Christianity, that's too late to mean anything. At this stage of the game, that's not going to matter. And we got to keep an eye on this because there's only one city left for Stalin. When he loses this, he's done. And we have our first elimination of the season. Yeah, Dying Civ seem to convert religion a lot. I don't know quite why the AI does that. Look at all these units stacked up. Gandhi and Isabella and Hammurabi all stacked up, potentially ready to attack this. Someone's going to get it. Who's it going to be? It's like a lottery slot machine here. It's Isabella. Izzy gets the point. This matters for fantasy purposes. <laughs> Legit chance for Gandhi to get a kill. He didn't get it, though. It was pretty much dumb luck as far as who was going to get it. But uh, it was Izzy gets it. Russian Civ has been destroyed. All right. So we pause from the game for a second to go update our spreadsheet. All right. So game one, Stalin out. Last place shows what my pick was. I actually do think Stalin can win on repeat playthroughs of this map, but uh, it just didn't happen today for him. Izzy gets the kill. There we go, Isabella. We got Stalin. Stalin, where is Stalin? Oh, he's in the pool one bracket, that's right. He's out on turn 231. Game one. Actually, I think I usually type that out as turn. Okay. And that means Stalin, in our fantasy context, no, Nabokso has the big offer, unfortunately. And that's a point for Isabella, who is on Team Sun Huge. All right, let's go. <laughs> Rest in peace, my prediction for today's contest. Um, <laughs> oh, two points. Yes, two points. Sorry. That's right. It's two points for Stalin. It's not a zero. That's two points for first to die. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Correction. Two points for first to die. All right. Hey, you, I mean, you got something, Nabuxo. You got something. Okay. All right. On we go then. So I, I want to wait until it looks like we're about to lose Pericles as well. I'm going to wait until this is over, and then we'll try to take stock of the game and start to think about where everything is. Oh, yeah, prediction contest. You guys are right. We have to write that into the prediction contest, which actually involves a lot more people. 
Okay, game one. You guys can, I uh, gotta flip this over so you can actually see this. Okay, first eliminated, Stalin. How many people had it? We had 300 entries, roughly. And 11 people had him first to die. Well, congrats to those of you who had him first to die. You saw something the rest of us did not. Um, how likely was this? Well, we'll find out when we do the alternate histories. Only 11 out of like 300. So um, like 3% of the contest, roughly. Chance of Sparta flipping. Where is Sparta? Uh, very high. <laughs> Very high. It's surrounded by Indian culture. Yeah, I don't. Um, it's unlikely that that can be held by Shaka long term. He'll probably have to give that up. Maybe if he stuffs enough units in there, it'll be okay though. All right, can Shaka finish this off? He's definitely going to finish off Mycenae on this turn, but can he now get Thebes as well? He needs to get one more city before one of these other leaders who does not like him. Yeah, Gandhi's going to flip some of these captured cities. Um, he doesn't have as much culture over here. He builds the Statue of Liberty as well. Mycenae is going to be a tough hold as well, because it's got so much Indian culture. All right. Can Shaka finish this off before someone comes slamming into him from the other side? Shaka is not well liked by anyone. And this is why, even though he might be at the top of the scoreboard now, I think his position is very precarious. He's still running Taoism. No one else is running Taoism. He's low piece weight. Most of the other leaders in this game are either high piece weight or middle piece weight. And uh, he declared war on Hammurabi, <laughs> I think twice. I know he did it at least once. Um... And he's falling behind in tech in a way that's not too good. So I, he should be able to finish off Pericles. But as I said, I think his position's shaky after that. So who... There could be an opportunity here for Hammurabi and Isabella. Like a real opportunity for them. I think Gandhi is looking very good to win by culture from this position. Which, by the way, remember when he planted his uh, second city on the coast? Everybody was like, uh, what's Gandhi doing? Well, had some good diplomacy break his way. The fact that Stalin never attacked him, Shaka never attacked him, was lucky. That was not guaranteed. But uh, it's looking pretty good right now. Oh, well, there goes our next leader. As I said, I did not think Pericles was going to last much longer, so he is out. And we're down to four leaders for this one. All right, so just get this down as well. This is not as significant because it's the second person to be out. So there's no scoring associated with that. All right, so that's a kill for Shaka and Pericles. Game one, turn, what turn is this? 239. 239 is out. And one fantasy point to the owner of Shaka, who is Cutter Axis. One fantasy point awarded for the kill. I think I did that right this time. Okay. All right. So now that we have eliminated the two weaker AIs, let's think about this game and see what the situation looks like. How long until Shaka plots his next war? <laughs> All right. Well, this is a long inner turn here. Is there another war breaking out on this inner turn? Yeah, I do want to look at the Diplo screen. Okay. That took a minute. So we're going to refresh the map. There we go. All right, as Gandhi builds yet another... Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, that could shake things up. God, Shaka didn't even wait one turn. He declared war on Gandhi the next turn. That actually could shake things up. All right. Wow. wow. Okay. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Okay. Well, that's war number 10. All right. Well, let's, let's stop before we get into that. Okay. First of all, we got to see um, the graphs, the graphs, the graphs. Okay. First up, score. Everybody's pretty close on score. There's not a huge difference there. All right, GMP, wow. Wow. Okay. 
well, somebody's economy is quite a bit stronger than everybody else's economy. Um, production, Shaka and Hammer are out in front. Food, Shaka has a small lead. Power, Shaka has a significant, oh boy, oh, oh wow, okay. Wow, I was not expecting him to take a, just fly into a war this quickly, okay. So let's look at the Diplo environment, right? Shaka just declared war on Gandhi, so the ones we care about are Izzy and Hammurabi. They are friendly with each other, so the two of them will never declare on each other. Izzy does not like Shaka. She is annoyed. Hammurabi does not like Shaka. So these two have a very real poss possibility of coming to Gandhi's aid. In fact, I would say that is the most likely outcome. Um, Isabella could technically declare war on Gandhi as well, but that seems unlikely. Are either of them plotting at the moment is the big question. All right. Hammurabi is ready to try to ride to the rescue and save Mr. Gandhi. Isabella also planning to ride to the rescue to save her boy, her boy Gandhi, presumably. The big question is, can Shaka take one of the three legendary cities, which would delay the game by a lot? Because right now they are Varanasi, Vijayanagari, Delhi. Oops, I did not mean to twist the map there. Apologies. Vijayanagara is actually in line to be attacked. Um, look at all this. If this city gets captured, that would represent a giant setback for Gandhi. It would slow down his cultural victory by quite a bit because currently is on line for, I would say, probably a little after turn 300. I expect him to turn on the slider very soon. In terms of actual military techs, Gandhi does not have rifling. Uh, does have military tradition, but does not have rifling. He does not have machine guns. He does not have infantry. He has just raced purely to the... Oh, he's gone straight to mass media. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have anything better than muskets right now. So Shaka can put a real hurt on him here. This is interesting. This has injected some real drama into the game. If um, Hammurabi and Izzy are slow here, or if by some got some chance Isabella is plotting against Gandhi, which is possible, um, Gandhi could still lose this game. Like, he does not have this sealed up yet. So how much time is Shaka going to get here? before these others come after him is a, is a big question. All right, in terms of military tech, well, we'll look at military tech when um, the others join the conflict. As far as Shaka's military tech, so we just looked at Gandhi. He has military science. So you might be like, oh, cool, grenadiers, and he's about to have cannons. You might be like, oh, cool, so does that mean he's like early industrial? And the answer is no. <laughs> he is not early industrial. He has beelined super hard for these techs super hard he is very far behind in technology um hammurabi has rifling does not have military tradition but does have rifling and otherwise is most of the renaissance era techs isabella does not have rifling does have military tradition does not have gunpowder so she's basically still medieval she needs to get gunpowder and rifling to advance into renaissance does he have gunpowder? Who? Um, Hammurabi? Hammurabi does. Gandhi does. And Shaka does. So everyone except Izzy does. Okay. Let's keep an eye on uh, Shaka's army then. Can he get to Vijayanagara and capture this before the other AIs ride into the rescue? So where is his big stack? Big stack's right here. This is a doom stack right here. 103 units. 103 units. And it's headed straight for Vijayanagara. It's like, Izzy, you coming in? Hammer, you coming in? You guys getting ready? The stack moves forward another tile. Jeez, that's a lot of units. <laughs> Hammer signs a defensive. Well, that'll break if either of them declares war. Look at that stack. Like locusts advancing across the terrain. So here's Gandhi's stack, 20 units. I mean, it's not sufficient to keep up with this stack. All right, Doom stack continuing to advance. 
it will certainly free up a lot of cultural pressure on Sparta, Mycenae, Bulawayo, if this city falls. How many siege? I don't know how many siege units. Now, the problem is Shaka was not able to upgrade to cannons just yet. He just discovered steel, but this stack in the field does not have cannons. Cannons would drop these defenses in like two turns. I think it's going to take him a little longer here because he, uh, well, he took out a good chunk that turn. Also lost the city of Sparta, but also did lose a city there. That cost Gandhi a good chunk of his stack, though. Yeah, Gandhi lost most of his stack taking that, so I think this will just get captured back. Interesting times in this game. All right, still no movement from the other AIs yet. Just waiting, waiting, waiting for them. Shaka is going for rifling tech now, it looks like. Or at least, no, he's just going for printing press. Okay, I guess. Interesting that he's not particularly mounted. His uh, units are, he doesn't have any of the military tradition units yet. All right, so these defenses are probably be down in two more turns. And then we'll see if this city falls. 17%. Although Sparta still is holding out here. I actually thought that would just get taken right back by Shaka, but that did not happen. I guess because his whole stack's up here. He still has 100, he has 131 units in this stack. Good lord. 131 units in that stack. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad that Civ 4 has tools so I can identify the size of the stack. Yep. We all knew that was going to happen as soon as the defenses were down. The uh, AIs did not ride to the rescue of Gandhi fast enough to protect this unit, this city at least. All right. So that all of that culture goes bye-bye unless it gets recaptured by Gandhi um, and look at that so now his third city is Bombay which is only 7500 that is a much much longer way away where's Bombay up here yeah this city is nowhere close so unless Gandhi can get this city back his cultural victory attempt has basically just been shut down completely there um, now there is always the chance that the AIs can jump in here and maybe one of them capture and gift back to Gandhi, in which case the culture it had will be preserved, but um, Gandhi would still have to rebuild all the cultural buildings that were lost. And of course the city is not producing culture while it's being held by the, um, the Zulus, plus it's going to starve down uncontrollably in Zulu hands. So Shaka is really taking a wrecking ball to Gandhi's uh, Presumed easy cultural victory here. Also, Sparta, I don't think, is going to be able to hold out much longer now. Completely surrounded by uh, Zulu culture. Domination on the table? Maybe. He's a long way away from domination. Long way away. Um, but this looks like it could be a very long game, given that the tech pace is so slow in this game. Very slow tech pace. All right. And we're on turn 250. I was I thought Gandhi had this all but sealed up when. All right, so yeah, here comes Hammurabi. But was it too late for Gandhi? Was it too late for Gandhi? Does this now open up Hammer and Izzy to have a chance to win the game? Between the two of them, I think Hammurabi's in the stronger position. All right, so how big is his main stack here? He's got 71 units over here. Jeez, this is a wild, wild game. All right, in terms of power, Shaka's first, and Hammurabi's second. But and uh, if you want the tech comparison again, so Hammurabi way ahead in overall tech. Um, but right now, it's pretty close. So he has rifles, and uh, he's about to unlock calves. Rifles and calves. Shaka, for his part, does not have rifles or calves. Actually still has just knights, but uh, has grenadiers and cannons. I don't really know how that matches up, which is better. Probably, wow, Shaka still does not even have philosophy tech. Oh my god. So at some point down the road, Hammurabi's going to out-tech him. We'll get up to, uh, like, infantry. But for right now, they're relatively comparable, I think, as far as these. India alone will not be enough for domination, I'm pretty sure. Plus, Shaka's going to almost certainly be in a 3v1 here soon, so he's going to have a lot on his hands. Also, looks like Izzy just jumped in as well. Oh, did I not get a war counter? I don't think I did. Looks like Izzy just jumped in too. 
Okay. Yeah, he's got a lot on his hand. So we have to we just jump straight from 10 to 12, don't we? Just go right up to 12. Yep. All right, so now the full 3v1's in order, which is what I think we were expecting, which is really bad news for Shaka. The problem is, though, that he, he just punched Gandhi in the face by taking this city. So I think Gandhi, or uh, excuse me, I think Shaka is going to get rolled up here. I don't think he can face all three AIs at once. The problem is, though, now Gandhi's presumed cultural victory is just who knows what the heck happens. So Hammurabi and Isabella now have much greater chances. And plus, if Shaka's territory starts getting rolled up, that's a lot of territory that people could capture. And Gandhi is in a very poor position to capture it because his military is so small. Hammurabi, as I said, probably has the best shot. So it's a wild, wild game right now. So uh, we're just going to keep an eye on the map and see. But I expect a lot of territory is going to change hands. So plus, uh, Shaka is going to take this city back over here. But uh, I think he grabs Sparta, and then he loses Opus over here on the same turn. So there goes Opus. And then over here, once we roll around to Shaka, I just don't think he can fight all of these guys at once. Maybe if he can peace out with uh, one of them, he might be able to have more of a shot. Boy, there's a lot of fighting. Yeah, there goes Sparta. So a two-city trade there overall. But Gandhi loses another city. It's also randomly a small Izzy stack here. I just don't see... Oh, wow, this is not very well defended, is it? I guess this will get taken back sooner rather than later. Very few C units in here. Yeah, not a lot. So that city maybe gets taken back and gifted to Gandhi, but it's definitely been slowed in its cultural pursuit by a lot. Still, spaceship seems so far away. Maybe Gandhi is still fine. <laughs> just because the spaceship is... No one is even remotely close to spaceship. You know what? Maybe this is a UN ending. Honestly, this could be a Diplo ending, believe it or not, because um, Gandhi is researching mass media. If he builds the UN and like Hammurabi's the opponent, Izzy would vote for Hammurabi. Like the two of them together might be able to get enough population. What a strange game. Very, very weird game. All right. Anyway, where's Isabella's stack? I think this is her main stack here. Yeah, this is her. Well, she doesn't have too much here. It's actually not a very impressive stack stack all right so there's been some heavy trading going on here i should look at the should pull up the power graph so we can see who is getting the better of these trades always the possibility for someone to just peace out from this war too right so far shaka seems to be hanging in there pretty decently he got that big chunk on gandhi that was when he took vijay anagara so far he's holding his own it seems like from what I can see, he did not uh, just get blasted too badly at the start of this. He's got more units rolling up towards AC and really seems to have it in for Gandhi. <laughs> for whatever reason, he's really uh, attacking Gandhi. Also, why is he researching scientific method? What an odd choice to research. All right, Vijayanagara was reinforced, so that city's not falling anytime soon. That's kind of the key one for Gandhi. Gandhi is still stuck now with Bombay as his third city. He's got two, got two cultural cities, but he doesn't have the third one at the moment. Well, we'll see what mass media does. Mass media could introduce uh, stop the war against blank, potentially. All right, Izzy just took a city. That was one of the old core cities, although Shaka then took this city. So they just traded um, over here. More fighting. It's extremely bloody game. The double city captures right there. I don't know what to make of this. This has been such a weird game. It's been entertaining to watch. I think everybody's just going to get decimated in the prediction contest. We're going to have like Hammurabi first, Shaka second. <laughs> Diplomatic victory. No. <laughs> just everybody gets killed in terms of pred predictions. Anyway, yeah, Shaka, I thought he might just start collapsing because he's in a 3v1, but he's kind of holding his own at the moment, um, like trading back and forth. Now, where is Hammer's next Doom stack going to go? Here's his Doom stack over here, 73 units. So we do want to keep an eye on where this goes. But yeah, I mean, Shaka seems to be hanging in there pretty well. He's got another stack here. It looks like he's trying to, well, he just mauled Isabella right there. 
I wonder if war, war okay. War weariness and emancipation are killing him though. His econ is like in tatters. <laughs> Look at that. War weariness, emancipation. <laughs> statue of Zeus. Oh wait, no, Statue of Zeus is in Vijayarnagara, right? Yeah, he has the Statue of Zeus. Okay. It couldn't be much worse if he didn't have that. Shaka against the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shaka finally going for rifling tech. Um, he's still missing <laughs> philosophy and theology, but he's going for rifling tech. He's going to fight and fight and fight. Never going to stop. Uh, anyway, Gandhi finally hit his prize of mass media, so where he goes next, we'll see. Might want to go for rifling tech as well. Uh, the, the tech paths for these people are so bizarre, too. Hammurabi did have, get rifling. Is Izzy going for rifling next? No, she's scientific method as well. Okay. Just wants to obsolete all her monastery. She doesn't even have gunpowder, so. Um, she's still basically medieval. She can't build cuirassiers or cavalry. Not much point in researching military tradition and skipping gunpowder. That doesn't make a lot of sense. All four of these leaders only have one tech flavor. Well, we're really seeing it. They all have bizarre paths to the tech tree, as far as I can tell. Yeah, Shaka is still uh, hanging in there in a 3v1. Go Shaka. <laughs> Go Shaka, apparently. Where's his big doom stack again? I think he brought some of it over here. Uh, I can't seem to find one big st He had that huge stack with 100 and something units, but I can't find where he has that now. It seems to have been split up a bit. All right, Hammurabi had the big stack over here. Uh, Hammurabi is still hanging out over here. What's he doing with this stack? Hammurabi, you're just wasting. If you need to go send those units somewhere. Don't just have them stand there on the border doing nothing. And meanwhile, Hammurabi, look at this. He's going to try to take this city back. Shaka's like, nope, I'm just going to take this city back. I don't care. And he just, oh my god, is Shaka winning a 3v1? Am I crazy? Is he winning a 3v1 here? <laughs> is this happening? Is this real life? He just mauled Isabella. <laughs> Seriously, he just took out Izzy. Like, Izzy is like nothing left. She really has very little remaining. Um, and it's, and Gandhi has almost no military at all. So it's really just him against Hammurabi at this point. Hammer's Doomstack will be difficult to deal with. That's true. Where did it go? It was over here. It couldn't have moved far. Oh, it's still in the same spot. Hammurabi's just standing there in place. He's not even moving that stack of units. If nothing else, he's going to get these AIs to super peace relatively soon. Because, like, Gandhi and Izzy are probably going to want to get out of this war. That's not... Oh, here he goes. Here's his... This is not a huge stack, but it does have... It's all cannons and grenadiers. Um, I don't know that Delhi is going to do very well against these. These units are much more advanced. And he's marching straight on Delhi with this force of grenadiers and cannons. Um... If Delhi falls, Gandhi is 100% done. He will not win a cultural victory if he loses that. He will not win any victory if he loses that. Gandhi's now belatedly going for military science. Okay. This is this is one of the wildest games we've ever had in AI Survivor. This is crazy. <laughs> we've had some good ones over the years, but this one is right up there with some of the best we've ever seen. Yeah, Shaka's going for rifling now. Okay, cannons will just decimate, yeah. Just take out the defenses like they're not even there. And, I mean, Karasiers don't get defensive bonuses. Muskets and longbows do not stand up to cannons and uh, grenadiers. Oh, man. Is this city going to fall too? Well, there goes the defenses. There's a sword is the top defender. That can't be good. Uh, Gandhi? Gandhi! Oh, and he even got peace with Hammer. Oh my god. He actually got a city for peace. Or Hammer will be liberated. Oh my god. Shaka is out of control. He just got peace with the only one of those three that was actually strong enough to fight him. Oh my god. Shaka. He's unleashed. He might do this. He might seriously do this. <laughs> um, I think he's going to run over Gandhi here, and then that's GG. This was a game that was all pretty much just sealed for Gandhi to win, and Shaka was like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm seizing the game back. This is my game. 
Let's see if he can take this. Um, it's still waiting to process his turn. I think he's got Delhi on this turn here. <laughs> There's one catapult still in there. Is that it? Did it survive with one catapult? Well, that city can't survive much longer if it only has one catapult. Nope. It got captured. Wow. Oh, my God. Just put a fork in Gandhi and just stab him through the heart right there. Oh, my God. Jeez. So all these wonders. Broadway is actually super useful considering all the unhappiness that Shaka is suffering from. The others, these other things are not that useful, but... Look at all these great people, too. Three great military instructors, two great scientists, another great artist. All right, Gandhi's, I mean, he's not winning a cultural victory now. Bombay's not even the last one. Now it's Padalaputra. I mean, and this city is, it's not even 5,000 culture yet. I mean, Gandhi's done. Put a fork in him. <laughs> Try a sledgehammer instead. Shaka looking like he might win by dominate. Yeah, he might win by domination here. Now, the odd thing is, if he can't win by domination, he can't win by spaceship. So if he's slow in attacking these, Hammurabi to win by spaceship also becomes a possibility, too. But, uh, yeesh. All right, he's got another, he's got some other sizable stacks over here. Rifling also gets all these knights to become um, cavalry, which is a big, big upgrade as well. Anyway, Gandhi might be able to recapture Delhi on his turn, but then I think it would just get recaptured back again by Shaka. Nope. Gandhi putting up no fight at all. Man, Gandhi, I mean, he's just, this is like a, this feels like it's a wrap. Still, not quite over yet. Hammurabi could jump back in here, but if uh, if Shaka is able to consolidate and take over a couple more Indian cities, I mean, he does have the whole Greek heartland down here, right? I kind of haven't commented on this, but like all these Greek cities he captured, we kind of thought they were just going to flip away, but uh, no, they did not flip away. And now he has like a second homeland down here that's really contributing. So, yeah, um, Izzy has, like, no military left at this point. It's just these slow stacks of grenadiers and cannons just advancing. And that's a stack of 50 units. By the way, um, no open borders between Hammurabi and uh, Shaka. So this one tile little corridor is what allows him to get to Isabella's territory. Otherwise, he would not be able to make it through. Yeah, otherwise, he'd be completely blocked off. Just this one tile little stretch of territory <laughs> and shaka now has rifling tech too so he's caught up in military tech and so unless hammurabi can get to something more advanced in terms of tech but uh shaka's just gonna have so many cities it's gonna be really hard to stop him like there's no way novgorod can hold for any length of time now that cannons are on the scene um the defenses go down really fast you don't have to stand there for eight turns bombarding. Just with the cannons, they just fall immediately. So that city's done. And, like, the route is on. There's still no more... Oh, never mind. I was going to say there's not another stack here. Yeah, the Grenadiers plus cannons combo just kind of unstoppable right now. Agra's already lost its defenses, so it should fall shortly, too. If not on this turn, then shortly thereafter. Shaka's just, he's unleashed, man. Unstoppable. Yeah, Gandhi rifling, but it's far too late at this point. Rifles aren't even very good against grenadiers. Um, like, they're not really going to do that much against a mostly grenadier attacking force. Here's a nut. Wow, Izzy just getting, look over here. This city, Yakut's now under assault, too. And now here comes the rifles. It's just like one city after another is just falling here after another. So Hammurabi, yeah, you, you you might if you're not plotting war, Hammurabi, this game is just over. Shaka is going to easily take over all the remaining territory, everything except your oddly shaped empire. <laughs> so Yakuts should fall here. Yeah, Shaka's tech path. I, so he's he's going for steam power now, and Spain's pretty much reduced back to their original heartland, like the original Spanish core. Just refresh the map real quick. Uh, World Builder, so that we can continue seeing these messages. Okay, uh, yeah, so Hammurabi, if you're curious about what he's up to. So he's on the scientific method line, astronomy, physics. 
Shaka is still missing a tremendous number of texts. He's like, I'm just going to ignore everything that gives an economic benefit in the Renaissance and just research all the military texts. It's on steam power. Now, of course, to get to assembly line, he needs corporation, which means he needs education and economics and uh, constitution. So he can't get to assembly line anytime soon because he's blocked by this corporation requirement. He needs these three texts. And then he also needs constitutions. So then he also needs these texts as well. So he needs like six more texts there. Oh, yeah, he's going railroads. Okay, yeah, no, railroads are, are, you're right. He is not going assembly line. He's going railroads combustion. I see. Machine guns, very useful defensive unit, obviously can't attack. Uh, but railroads are super useful for mobility. That's actually a great tech for him because he's got a big, widely spaced empire. And it looks like the next attack is up here at Bombay, over here. For some reason, ignoring Calcutta over there, but I guess we'll get to that eventually. Yeah, just kind of slowly cutting his way through. It's a very slow moving force because there's no cavalry. It's almost all grenadiers and cannons, but it's like, if you can't stop me, it doesn't really matter how fast I'm moving through here. Hammurabi, is he researching? Nope, he is just teching, not, not uh, plotting war on anyone at the moment, so... Yep, not plotting war on anyone. I mean, his tech rate is garbage. We're almost on turn 300, and we still are not even close to infantry on anyone's part. So the tech rate in this game is abysmally slow. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's the kind of game where Shaka thrives, let's be honest. Gandhi's trying to do his best, but uh, Gandhi does not have much territory left here. And he's just outnumbered by a wide... Oh, I didn't even realize there's a, now there's a stack over here pushing on a... Spain's capital, heading after Madrid now. Could just be no, could just be Shaka and Hammurabi left uh, by the end of this game. In fact, it kind of looks like we're driving towards that. <laughs> just Shaka and Hammurabi and no one else left alive. All right, over here. Yeah, it looks as though Shaka has... His offensive seems to have stalled out over here because he seems to be putting more of his reinforcements into Spanish territory at the moment. There's also like a billion um, Hammurabi units just riding around in circles, which is pretty hilarious to see. <laughs> 17 cannons? Yep, ninth, now up to 19. Okay, the defenders are not going to have much of a chance against that. All that collateral damage. The cannons should have odds to win, like not just do collateral, but out outright win a lot of these battles. Yeah, so. Great General Born. But, uh... Madrid goes down, and that pretty much seals it for Isabella. She is basically done in this game at this point. Looks like Shaka and Hammurabi are going to be uh, the last two standing in this one, barring something truly unbelievable happening. Uh, let's advance it one turn so we'll get the power loss from that capture in. Question is, will these leaders survive to get to the wildcard game is the other big thing. That's a big deal, especially for the fantasy contest, is do these leaders survive to get into the wildcard game? All right, so about the same as before, Izzy's just got nothing left. Gandhi, barely more. Shaka has not really been touched. Hammurabi's the only one that could threaten him, and Hammurabi still seems to be staying out of this for right now. Oh, Hammer's going to come back in for another round. Okay. But it feels like it's too late. It honestly feels like it's too late at this point. Could be just be me, but it feels like it's a little late. Izzy's been gutted at this point. She has very little left. Has just a bunch of Tundra cities at the at the moment. This stack is just like punching a hole right through the middle of Spain's territory. Are there any? Ca there are no cannons in this stack, so I think the stack will just attack and capture the city immediately. Like Kremlin's nice, but like all right. Oh, I guess there were some cannons in there. I must have missed them. Still, Cordoba will lose its defenses. Uh, yeah, 17 cannons. Like, you don't have to wait for very long to take down defenses when you have 17 cannons. So that city should fall, too. I'm a little surprised it didn't fall that turn. What's going on back here in Indian territory? Again, Gandhi seems to have stabilized for the time being. Because I think Shaka is sending all his reinforcements over here. So that offensive seems to have stalled. For whatever reason, Calcutta... You would think he would have taken Calcutta. It's... Culture is blocking so many tiles at the moment, but no. Yeah, Gandhi's capital is actually this city over here. <laughs> uh, in terms of GMP, 
So Hammurabi is taking over as the GMP leader, which is not surprising. Shaka's economy is still absolute garbage. In terms of research, Gandhi's 382, Hammurabi's 1100. He's definitely the research leader. Isabella 263, Shaka 514. So Hammurabi is out researching Shaka by a two to one margin. So that does matter in the long term, but Shaka is vastly larger in terms of territory size. He's not getting the full value out of a lot of these cities, though, because they're so cramped by enemy culture. Like, taking Seville would free up a lot of culture over here. Similarly, taking Calcutta would free up a lot of space over in Indian territory. So not getting the full benefit from all of these captures. Also, why are there still knights running around for Shaka? He has a should have cavalry at this point. Maybe he just hasn't paid to upgrade them. He does have an awful lot of them. So, just waiting for Hammurabi to punch back. But as we said, do think it's probably too late. Again, the one the one tile connection here, not allowing reinforcements to flow through. Where is where is that stack? All right. There's a whole bunch of units over here, but I don't know where they're going. Oh, I get all right, here's the Doom stack. I guess it's going for Barcelona. Just going for the let's rip out Spain's heart approach by taking all of their core cities. Even if it doesn't make a lot of sense geographically. This is like the Sherman's March to the Sea. We're just gonna rip apart your ability to wage war by tearing apart your entire econ. Um, taking Barcelona, wow, the borders dropped, uh, cultural defenses dropped in one turn. Um, taking this city frees up a lot of territory as well. Anyway, there's the war declaration we were expecting. Let's see if we can find Hammurabi's big um, stack. Also starting to get a lot of wars. 13 is a lot in a game that only has six AIs. This is a pretty decent sized stack. Is this? No. Where's his main stack? Hard to find, as always. It's usually something that charges across the border. Uh, this is it here, 52. I mean, there's other cab stacks, but I think that's the biggest one. These units are a bit exposed, though, marching through Shaka's territory. I think Shaka's actually going to capture Barcelona this turn. He's got the big stack next to it. So we'll see what happens in terms of trading. Yeah, there goes Barcelona. That actually frees up a lot of territory in terms of uh, culture in the middle of the map. Now Spain's been basically cut in half. So Novgorod was captured, okay, over here. Wait, what was the first city captured this turn? St. Petersburg and Novgorod were both captured. So there were two cities taken. First scene, oh, okay, right here. All right, so right here in the middle of Zulu territory was where I managed to strike and capture. And Hammurabi goes before Shaka, that's correct, in terms of turn order. We're almost to turn 300. We're still not even close to the modern era. <laughs> I can't get over how awful the tech pace is in this game. All right, well, say what you will. Uh, Hammurabi has had some success in taking some cities here. Did take three cities. Oh, we lost the graph with uh, Hammurabi, so we have to use his graphs now to get power. Looks like they've traded roughly evenly so far. Of course, Shaka had a lot of his stack off in Spanish territory, so presumably he'll be bringing that back. Shaka, for all that we've been talking about this, Shaka is still in a 3v1. <laughs> I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that he's still in a 3v1 war right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, Gandhi just can't get played, just has no shot at a cultural victory now. Just lost too many of these cities. So the main fighting should be right around here, roughly. Yeah, Shaka finally started taking some losses. He just lost another city down here at Opus. Pretty good attack from Hammurabi. Caught him uh, out of position, it looks like, and was able to grab some cities with big cap stacks. Okay, this city was so traded a city on either side. I have to keep refreshing this so that we get the city capture notices. A lot of units on either side. I just feel like it's very difficult for Hammurabi in the long run because he's so much smaller. 
Oh, oh, Delhi recaptured by Gandhi. Wow, okay. With one last unit recapturing the city. Interesting, Delhi recaptured here. Interesting, and Vijayanagara is not that well defended. If Gandhi could take this city back, does he get the cultural victory back on track? That would be incredible if he was able to do that. Of course, Delhi lost is down, 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 to, down to size one, lost all of its cultural infrastructure, but this game is... <laughs> <laughs> is so slow. He might have a shot here if he could recapture Vijayanagara. Maybe. Look at, look at how unhappy this city is. <laughs> Starving frantically down. Delhi also restores all of the borders that, like, opens up a lot of the borders. Yeah, well, Shaka had to pull all his units away from Indian territory because he's dealing with this new attack that's come in from Hammurabi. Yeah, so you can see they both have suffered of roughly the same amount of losses. <laughs> uh, I'd say they're trading pretty evenly. Uh, do note that Hammurabi has assembly line about to finish, though. That's, uh, that's a very key tech. Very significant tech there. Hammurabi has liberated Novgorod. Where is that? Up here? Oh, okay. Which passes back to Spanish control. Okay. Probably would have been better to hold on to that yourself. Um, so maybe Shaka doesn't have this sealed up. Sure felt like he did. Here comes his big stack down. 41 more units coming down. Especially with the assembly line on its way from Hammurabi. Got to keep an eye on Vijayanagara, which is not being defended very well at all. But not that Gandhi has much to throw at it, but... Uh, Gandhi also very slowly going for some of these same techs. Okay, here comes the Gandhi stack. Where's the big Hammurabi stack? It was down here by Opus a little while ago. I think it's still in this area. Man, there's been a lot of fighting in this game. <laughs> well, there it is. There, I think that's the Hammurabi stack there. Yeah, 29 units has lost some. And up here is the Shaka stack, like 50 units. So they're hanging around right here, still trading units. The Ironclad versus Ironclad action in the sea. I, I try to avoid watching the sea battles because they're not really relevant to what's going on in the game. All right, Izzy. By the way, did anyone ever build the United Nations? <laughs> Gandhi has the tech for it. No one's actually built it, though. Delhi is trying to make it back, building the levee. Gandhi is back up to 500 research. Hammurabi's at 900, and Shaka's at 223. Oh, God. He has to run 20% on the culture slider. <sighs> Everybody's econ is so bad. Why didn't Gandhi build the UN? I, I mean, because he didn't have, he probably didn't have time. He was fighting for his life, as we said. <laughs> Everybody's economy is just so bad in this game. <laughs> no one can research. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen something quite like this before. We're 300 turns in. I mean, we could be in for a very long game. Oh, boy. Just... <laughs> no one has time. Yeah, we've never had a game and get anywhere close to that. Because um, normally on Deity, they research some kind of victory condition. But... Uh... Yeah, well, we're 300 turns in. I mean, we'll just, here, go ahead and give the graphs again. Hammurabi is like the only one who has an intact economy left. Production, food, oof, a lot of starving going on here, power. Looks like Shaka may have recovered a little bit, but he really would benefit from getting a piece with one of these three opponents somewhere, just so he could concentrate his forces a bit more. Yeah, definitely would benefit. All right, Vijayanagara is taking some heat here, but now there's machine guns in here. And Gandhi, all right, well, Gandhi has cannons, so Gandhi might be able to take this back and then, you know, maybe get the cultural victory back online again. That would be absolutely incredible if Gandhi was able to do that. Yeah, 500 is the last turn. Oh, apparently he was still on the offensive against Izzy. Izzy actually doesn't even have that many cities left. She has one, two, two cities plus the three in the northern tundra. Jeez. 
suffering from, she's suffering from war weariness too. How about Hammurabi? How much war weariness does he have? A lot. Statue of Zeus is still in... Oh wow, if Statue of Zeus were to flip out of Shaka's hand, that would actually be a pretty big blow to him. He would suddenly double all his war weariness, at least against uh, Gandhi. And I suspect he has an awful lot of war weariness banked up from fighting against Gandhi forever. Whew. Yeah, I think that this city is probably going to fall here. I don't think that it can hold. And then Gandhi's got his... I mean, I, I actually think that Shaka is winning against... Um, uh, what's his name? Against Hammurabi. But um, that's allowing Gandhi to kind of get back in this again. And Gandhi was beyond dead a little bit earlier in this game. Oh, wow. Vijayanagara held. I thought it was going to fall on that inner turn, but no, it looks like it held. All right, so this stack, there's more heavy trading going on over here. I think that stack that just took Yakutsk is about to get wiped out. Yep. Yeah, I think that was overall bad trade for um, Hammurabi. Oh, but Vijayanagara did get cake taken. Okay, that could be very significant. All right, it's back on. Back in Gandhi's hands again. Has no culture, but it's back. It's back. He's back to... He somehow got Delhi and Vijayanagara back again. Unbelievable. <laughs> Now, it's not exactly close or anything. He still needs, he's 186 turns away, but I mean, it's not impossible. Remember, the borders were like, Shaka's borders were like all the way up here now. And uh, now these Greek cities are suffering mightily, plus the war weariness from losing Statue of Zeus. Oh boy, that's a lot of war weariness. That really is cutting into Shaka's war. Oh my God, look at this. Losing the Statue of Zeus was absolutely brutal for him. Beyond brutal. Every city is unhappy right now. I mean, and that's with him running the culture slider, too. He just... Oh, Shaka didn't have military tradition? What? I didn't realize he was missing military tradition. I thought he picked that up. That's why he was running around with knights. He didn't have a military tradition. He does have combustion. Jeez, okay. Well... <laughs> On the game goes, it turns out that fighting a 3v1 is actually really hard to do for an extended period of time. Yeah, this is not going to flip anytime soon. Gandhi's got this well under control. All right, Plains Cow Start rises again, indeed. As I said, I think Shock is actually winning the war against Hammurabi, but um, Hammurabi's allowed Gandhi to get back in this, which I thought had, when he lost not one, but two of his cultural cities, I was like, he's done. This is, you can't come back from this. That's just not possible, but... Yeah, Hammurabi's really dragged him back. He just suffered a bad loss there. Um, so Shaka, like if Shaka could get peace with Hammurabi, he could go back after Gandhi again. But uh, if he stays in the 3v1, Gandhi is once again slipping by somehow <laughs> in the 3v1. Because he certainly has not been focusing Gandhi recently. All right, where are the main stacks right now? I'm trying to see where Sh Shaka last had his stack over here. I think that the big stack that um, Hammurabi had has been wiped out in the course of the fighting. <laughs> Each side is like so exhausted at this point, like beyond, <laughs> beyond messed up at this point. All right, well, there's one, the one of the three that didn't get captured. <laughs> BJ Anagara still has a long way to go, but... Uh... As we said, it's got a shot. Got a shot now. Uh, pretty safe with infantry, maybe. It's true that grenadiers don't get the bonus against them, but um, if you bring enough um cannons, it doesn't really matter. And like, look at all those City Raider three grenadiers. Like, if you hit if you hit the city with cannons and then hit those with City Raider three grenadiers, it's not going to matter that much. I do agree. It, it's definitely harder to capture the cities with uh, infantry as opposed to rifles since Grenadiers do get the big attack bonus against rifles. Anyway, it seems like there's some units moving around up here for whatever reason. Uh, actually, here's a pretty decent stack. Uh, 15 units, not amazing. Shaka's economy is beyond awful at this point, though. So much war weariness. His tech is not advancing at, like, at all at this point. 
least he did get up to cavalry, which are great units. But I mean, he his cities are just relentlessly starving due to war weariness. Losing the statue of Zeus was catastrophic for him. Yeah, like look, Lundy is stagnant at size 12. Look at all these tiles he can't work because he lacks happiness. Because he has 16 unhappy faces. He desperately needs to get into emancipation too. Because everybody else is running emancipation, but uh, he can't get into can't get into it right now. <laughs> Just can't can't get into uh, the Civic. Yeah, Gandhi assembly line. Yeah. Eventually, everyone else's tech is going to advance. Eventually, <laughs> even though it's like completely pathetic how slow. <laughs> like we've definitely launched the spaceship long before this in some of the other games. And, like, look at the tech tree. So Hammurabi is most advanced right now, right? Look how many techs he still has to go. This is, like, easily another 80 turns to launch a spaceship from here. And Isabella is much worse. Gandhi is much worse. Gandhi has, like, no research economy left. And then Shaka is huge, but his economy is so bad. He doesn't even have theology or education yet. I mean, come on. <laughs> So Nubian is where, like, the big fighting is right now. Um, oh, where was this? Oh, another shock. Wow. Gandhi slowly leading the counteroffensive. Yeah, the infantry do seem to be making a difference here, too. Like, this stack, I feel like, would have easily captured the city without the infantry. But um, with them there, struggling, struggling, struggling. Hammurabi's also jumped ahead of Shaka in score now, too, because of the mass starvation that's been resulting. Pretty incredible, um, <laughs> pretty incredible that Shaka is now, by the way, the scores in this game are like lower than they were 50 turns ago. I know we've had that in some of our Civ War multiplayer games occasionally where like the scores go down over time because there's so much whipping and fighting, but it's rare to see that happen in a game like this, um, in an AI game. Yeah, it looks like this attack has faltered and there it is. Gandhi has made peace with Shaka. That's good, probably good news for Shaka, although every one of Gandhi's cities is now back in his hands again. Gandhi's still a very long way away from his cultural victory, but uh, this at least allows Shaka's economy to start rebounding. Yeah, look at this. That cut out like eight unhappy faces, so now his economy can finally start to rebuild. So now it's down to a two versus one with Izzy virtually dead. Oh, there's actually a force up here trying to take Seville, interestingly enough. Hammurabi is going to have a flight in, and that's a very nice tech. If you do not have any way to contest uh, the air, you are in awful, an awful lot of trouble. Because I think we showed uh, on the last uh, single-player game that was done on stream. So who is actually going to win this game? Someone has to win it some way, right? <laughs> we talked about so many different ways this game could end. But someone has to win this game some way. <laughs> sure, we can take a quick look at the um, power graph now. Oof. The, the answer is Shaka took an absolute beating. And I do think that the, switching point, the, the swinging point appears to be when Hammurabi got assembly line. It does appear that that flipped things. Look at Gandhi is rebounded too. It, it looks like assembly line was the difference. Um, that that really swung things. So is Gandhi building? He can build the United Nations. No, he's industrializing right now, getting factories and coal plants. Yeah, Shaka slowly, slowly collapsing due to lack of, uh, what's the barb tech situation? Uh, we, the barbarians don't have any presence on the map, so I don't think we have to worry about them. Yeah, I mean, this game is just slowly reversed. It's like the tidal wave crested and now it's fallen. Um, and Shaka was not able to get over the top. It looked like he had this. It really did. But just couldn't quite finish. He couldn't finish off Gandhi. He couldn't finish off Isabella. And then Hammurabi got peace, built up, came back again. It looks like that was the difference. Just that interval of peace really helped flip things. Spaceship is still in the cards. It is. It's true. Although my vic the victory date is not looking so hot. Um, cause I had spaceship arriving on turn 330 and, uh, that is not appearing to be the case. It could be Hammurabi by space. I mean, oh, and there's Hammurabi Shaka. Okay. 
so once again, the world is at peace. Shaka can try to <laughs> rebuild his shattered economy here as best he can. Oof. He even lost Mycenae. That city either culturally flipped or revolted or was given over in the peace treaty or something. Yeah, Gandhi hanging in there. Opus has traded hands like 18 times in this game. How long until he declares war again? Is he plotting war? Oh no, he's still at war. Oh, whoops, Izzy is still at war. I forgot there was still one war going on. Well, that's not so good for poor old Izzy. Um, <laughs> I forgot he was still in a war with Isabella. That's not great with Izzy. Um, Pentagon for Hammurabi, that's pretty nice. Well, this is less than great for Spain. Um, <laughs> We'll see if Shaka can finish off uh, Spain before someone else comes barreling into this conflict again. All right, that's Novgorod down. That city was liberated to Spain, like in the heartland of former Russia here. Just four cities remaining. Yeah, she still does not have rifling tech. She is not going to be able to hold out, not by herself. That... um sequence when Shaka just went through Yakuts, Madrid, Cordoba, Barcelona, just like literally sliced the heart right out of Spain. That just completely did her in. Lost all of her core cities. Seville, the only one left out of the core, and then just the northern fishing villages. So Shaka, I mean, for all the territory he conquered, a lot of the cities he took, he has not been able to benefit fully from because their borders um, were just swamped by culture from other nations. Like that's happened to a lot of his conquests. Only like down here has he really been able to avoid that. By the way, what's his war weariness situation now? Uh, almost non-existent because he, apparently he didn't suffer many losses against Spain. Really would benefit from getting into emancipation. His best hope is that the UN is built and then he can get into uh, <laughs> emancipation that way. Uh, one thing I did want to check is, would Gandhi vote for Hammurabi in the UN? And would Hammurabi vote for Gandhi? The answer appears to be Gandhi would absolutely vote for Hammurabi. Hammurabi probably does not vote for Gandhi, but it's less certain in the UN. Shaka has democracy. Okay, he just teched it. Gotcha. So I guess he now could adopt emancipation. And he just did. <clears throat> so that's big. He had minus five unhappiness in every city of emancipation. So now he'll be able to regrow. And on day the cities grow super fast. So he'll be able to regrow back up to decent size again. How probably would probably vote for Gandhi as shock as the opponent. True. So here is the UN. Um, that would mean that Gandhi, but if Gandhi builds it, he'll be nominated against Shaka, right? Because Shaka is top population. So maybe Gandhi could win by diplomacy. Wow, okay. Gandhi to win by Diplo? <laughs> How's culture looking? Um, not amazing for Gandhi. A little bit better, but still 118, still 118 turns. Now, if he turns the slider on, maybe, maybe. Everyone really hates Shaka, it's true. Hammurabi to win by space is also a real possibility, too. I mean, his teching has been slow like everyone else's, but he's starting to get there. He's finally cleared most of the industrial era. He's actually about to pick up tanks in the near future. Um, and he's about to hit the modern era. So I think if it's just pure space race, then Hammurabi would win. But there's like so many other ways this game could end before that. All right. Also still wondering, does Izzy survive? It's really, would someone else want to jump back into this war? All right, Hammurabi's plotting war again. So Izzy might actually survive this. And Gandhi is plotting war too. Okay. St Shaka, you are not a, a popular figure in this game. Question is, does he have enough time to finish off Izzy? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, Apollo program on turn 335. Nice and speedy. So like this war has, yeah, only two cities left for Spain, but I just don't know if it's been fast enough on the part of Shaka. And he's still going at it. Just, can he finish off these two remaining cities? I think he probably needs about 
eight to ten more turns to do that. And I don't think he's going to get that much more time. All right, here we go. Gandhi against Shaka for the Secretary General election. Obviously, just the one that calls the votes, not the uh, not the actual resolutions. But this will be interesting to see what the result is. Everybody's going to vote for Gandhi, right? It is Gandhi. Yeah, everybody's going to vote for him. Although Shaka might have enough votes to block a Diplo victory. He has 273. That's a lot of votes. Uh, yeah, Shaka has enough to block a Diplo victory. He has almost 50% of world pop. But he does not control the UN. Gandhi controls the UN. That's pretty interesting. All right. So Santiago is just about donezo here. But Mercia, I think, might be enough to let Izzy cling to life. We'll see. See how fast these other are as far as plotting war. Gandhi's now all research. Over here, um, Gandhi's about to unlock tanks. Did uh, Hammurabi get industrialism? I wasn't paying attention. No, he still does not have industrialism yet. All right, one city left for Izzy. And there's another stack here. I'm just like waiting every turn. When is the next war going to start? <laughs> Can Izzy survive with one city left? I don't think... I, I thought she would, but the, I also thought that Hammurabi and Gandhi would act a little bit sooner here. They have been slow to act in this conflict. Although I think they just acted this turn. There, okay, Gandhi takes action. Sparta has been captured. All right, there's another war. Everybody, let's get, let's just all get no points on the war declaration counter. I didn't think this game was going to last this long. Turn 343. So will this stack that's right here finish off Mercia, or will they turn around and go for a different target? Yeah, Gandhi has three war declarations now. Just did not expect that. Um, just trying to see if this big stack's going to move on Mercia or not. This random cat. Oh, wow. Diplo victory. Okay. Again, Shaka has enough population to block that. There is one mace and one pike still alive in this city. Can this one random cav, which is going to promote and has 26 experience, can that finish it off? Apparently, this stack is turning around and heading in another direction. Um, Gandhi was attacking over here. I just want to see if this city is going to hold out or not. It's like this one cab that's trying to finish it off. Oh, the cab died. And there's no one else. Okay. Shaka, the leading candidate. Um, Hammurabi abstained. Interesting. Gandhi, Hammurabi abstained. Now, if Hammurabi had voted for Gandhi, would that have been enough? I don't... Would that have been enough? 139 plus 182? Would that have been enough? Hold on. I'm just going to do the calculation. 139 plus 182. Uh, yes. No, it actually would have been quite a bit short. So there would have been 321, so that would have fallen well short. Okay. Would not have been anywhere near enough. Shaka has enough population that he can block without too much trouble. Look at this, one pike and one mace are all that's alive here, but I think that this city's gonna survive. I don't think Shaka is gonna go up here, especially if uh, Hammurabi attacks. I think that that city was saved by like one or two turns, like two more turns and the, the Cavs would have overrun this. So I think Izzy is gonna survive this bad, this uh, game. I could be wrong, because it could always peace out. Uh, yeah, look at Gandhi's power has recovered in a real way, wow. Uh, this is not voting well for Shaka here, especially because Gandhi can build tanks if he wants to. Oh, wait, does he have oil? Yes, he has oil. Wasn't sure if he had enough oil, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he can build tanks because he just got industrialism. And Hammurabi's on advanced flight, so. Gandhi has the tech edge. Oh, there's a tank. There we go. Yeah, Gandhi's got the tech edge here between these two. Is this game just continues slowly grinding onwards. So I don't think Diplo victory is in the cards unless Shaka falls low enough that he can no longer um, block the Diplo victory. Or if Hammurabi gets to the point that he'll vote for Gandhi. 
Well, both things would have to happen. Hammurabi would have to vote for Gandhi and the by the way, look at this. Look at this relation screen. <laughs> How unpopular is Shaka on here? Uh, cultural is still, I mean, Gandhi, if he turns the slider on, he's got a shot. But until he turns on the slider, I think that's a no. Still 105 turns away, which is a long time. Long, long time. All right. <laughs> I cannot believe this city is alive with two units. It's so close. Okay, where's the main fighting taking place? So Gandhi has, has tanks attacking rifles over here. Yeah, that's the problem. Shock, uh, yeah, Shaka's tech has just stagnated for so long that now that his rivals have tanks and, like, planes, it makes it hard, um, no matter how big his army might be. Cavs start looking not so great when you're up against tanks and, you know, bombers and whatnot. Shaka War, well, he shouldn't have too much because this war only just started. Like, he shouldn't have a lot. I mean, I know, okay, I know that some of that was left over from the last war, but, um, yeah, he hasn't done that much fighting in this conflict yet, specifically. Let me just refresh the map. Hammurabi coming into the war right now would be not good for Shaka. Is he still plotting? I'm assuming he is. We have enough hand on our hands right now. Don't forget that Shaka and Hammurabi are close at the top of the scoreboard, too. So, and so um, who gets first, who gets second? Like, Shaka, if he doesn't win, if he can cling to the top of the scoreboard, he would at least get a second and move on. But I don't know. If Hammurabi comes crashing in here yet again, it's going to be pretty dicey. Anyway, so we're on turn 350 right now. <laughs> Long game. Um, Gandhi has recovered to the point where he actually has... Okay, research. He's researching plastics. Now, we all know when the AI researches plastics, they often flip on the culture slider. I wonder if he would be interested in doing that. Um, Hammurabi has picked up satellites and has built the Apollo program, so he really just has the modern era text left to go, and then Izzy is irrelevant. Shaka has finally gotten through the, the Renaissance, but is still only like mid-industrial. He really needs assembly line. I don't know why he hasn't researched that yet. That should have been a higher priority for him. Instead, he's going for artillery, which is not bad, but assembly line is a much higher priority. At least Isabel is the wealthiest civ in the world. Anyway, so extra trade routes. Yeah. Boy, this game has been an absolute bloodbath. All right, four more turns until we get to see what the next resolution is. Still a good ways away from anyone winning a victory, amazingly. Although it does feel like Sparta has been captured. That was one of the border cities, yeah. It does feel like Shaka is starting to teeter. I feel like he's starting to collapse because he's, he's not being able to keep up in tech. That said, it is a straight 1v1 against Gandhi. This is the first time he's had an actual 1v1 against Gandhi. I mean, I guess technically he's at war with Izzy as well, but... I mean, come on, Isabel has one city that is producing muskets at one production per turn. <laughs> so, yeah, it's basically a 1v1 over here. So this is the first time he's been able to concentrate 1v1 against Gandhi since uh, the very beginning of this bloodbath happened. Sparta is the other opus, kind of, kind of. Look at this, war with Gandhi, worst enemy of Gandhi, worst enemy of Hammurabi, worst enemy of Isabella. He's just been in three front wars for, like, the last hundred turns, which is absolutely crazy. But uh, Hammurabi getting this much time to um, tech up in peace has been really nice for him. Hammurabi's actually gotten peace intervals. Um, Shaka has never gotten peace intervals because he's never refused to stop fighting. I keep trying to check just to see if there's anything moving on Mercy. I realize it's a low priority for Shaka, but just the chance to eliminate another AI... Yeah, rocketry. Why rocketry? Why not uh why not um assembly line? That would seem to be a much better choice. Anyway, sooner or later this guy's gonna Hammurabi's gonna come in. Sooner or later. <laughs> it fails, and then Isabella apparently decided to defy the revolution because she hates environmentalism so much, I guess. Just wants to pollute that badly. Anyway, Sparta was recaptured back. Oh, peace. Oh, no, Isabella, no. 
Shaka's made peace with Gandhi. Oh no, Isabella. <laughs> oh no, Isabella. Now, now Shaka is only at war with her again. Dooming Spain, <laughs> barring something really weird happening. Unless, unless this is the turn that Hammurabi has decided to act, but apparently not. Okay, well, it's just a matter of time now, right? Until we see the yellow uh, banners of the Zulus coming across the borders, uh, I would expect anyway. Oh, by the way, look at this. This, again, the one tile sprout through Shaka's territory. <laughs> Looks like he's got some units down here. Look at this tortured route to get through. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> anyway, Hammurabi is researching laser. Gandhi has not turned on the slider as I thought he might. Yeah, here comes the cavalry, literally, up here. So Hammurabi's got like another two turns to declare war or else he's dead. As one more turn until Izzy's dead. <laughs> oh, what's this? Free speech. Why did the stack turn around? <laughs> it's like, will this one city survive? <laughs> this one city with no food bonuses in the tundra, somehow clinging to life for turn after turn on end. Unclear why Shaka is not simply walking up and taking it. All right, once again, Izzy is worldwide troll defying all the resolutions for no clear reason. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to step forward. I'm going to step backwards. I'm going to step forwards. Uh, I think that Izzy's dead now. Even if the Hammurabi declares war at this point, he'll finish off this city before moving. Sorry, uh... Who, whoever has Izzy in the fantasy contest, sorry. I actually think she was in a pretty strong position for much of this game, but ultimately events broke against her. And so we're down to just three AIs. Gandhi somehow still alive, somehow. All right, so we gotta flip back over to our spreadsheet here for a second. So Izzy goes out in fourth place. Another kill for Shaka. Shaka having a pretty good game here, all things considered. And Izzy. Game one, some monstrously late turn. Turn 365. 365 is this incredibly long game, grinds on. All right. And then for Fantasy, that's another point for Shaka. And Izzy is out. Where's Izzy? Oh, she actually got a point. Not bad. Who else is out in this game? It was Izzy, Stan, and Pericles. I didn't highlight Pericles as being out. Where is he? There we go. Pericles did not score any points, unfortunately. All right. On we go as the game continues and this incredibly long game goes on. All right, let's 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 stop here for a second and think about how this game could actually end. Right now, the most likely end is probably Hammurabi by space. It's what we seem to be heading towards because he's ahead in the actual space race, right? As far as the actual tech tree. So Gandhi, not that far behind, but his economy is not as strong as Hammurabi's. Yeah, fiber optics fusion. Actually getting close to the end of the tech tree at this point. So it needs these two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And then has the poison pill stealth tech as well. Gandhi needs more than that, although it's not as far behind as you might think. Somehow Gandhi has almost made it to the end of the tech tree. Shaka is well past that. Um, needs to get to assembly line really badly. Okay. We also have outside chance for a Diplo victory. But Hammurabi does not seem likely to vote for Gandhi. And even if he did, the two of them together cannot outvote Shaka's 40% veto block. So that is a possibility. Domination does not seem likely. And then culture is our other possibility. 
would be this city is, you know, it's not that far off. It's at 33k culture. If Gandhi just turned the slider on, I think he could win culture in about 30 to 35 turns, which would almost certainly beat the spaceship. So we still have Gandhi to win by spaceship as a very real outcome, or um, by culture as a very real outcome if he would just turn the slider on. And then there's always the possibility of more warring too. So I think it's Gandhi to win by culture or Hammurabi to win by spaceship. And I think Hammurabi wins by spaceship if Gandhi does not turn the slider on, I think. Somehow Vijay Anagara is back to a size 18 city after all of that happened. <laughs> Anyway, is he still plotting? No. Hammurabi has stopped plotting for war, so he's probably focused on the spaceship. Believe it or not, Shaka is not currently plotting for war, and no one is currently plotting for war. Okay. So we have a brief interval here where the game is not in violent conflict for some incredible chance. <laughs> Hammurabi eats Shaka and wins by domination. Uh, I don't think there's time enough for that. All right, we're back to a secretary general vote. I wonder if Shaka can get control of this Probably not. Hammurabi is going to vote for Gandhi. Uh, we should also check in on their research rate. So Gandhi's up to 1,200 research somehow. Hammurabi's at 1,800. Shaka's only at 600. Yeah, Shaka's economy has just been so terrible. Gandhi has completed Civ Jewelers. Hmm, well, that could get him... <gasps> excuse me, that could get him a little bit of extra culture if he spreads it to his key cities. He actually got it in Vijayanagara. So anyway, Gandhi is Secretary General. That knocks him down to 66 turns on the cultural victory. If he would just turn the slider on, if he hadn't lost these cities for so long, I still cannot believe that he lost two of his three cultural cities and he might still win the game by culture. Wild, absolutely wild. Then again, this is an unbelievably slow um, victory. He might still do this, Gandhi by culture. He just has not given up. I, may, I guess I was wrong. I said Gandhi was completely done. I said, we said like, not just put a, what was it? Not just put a fork in him, but like put a steel, a steam driver through him or something. Um, but yeah, he still has a shot at this. He is only like 17K culture off on his third city. It has been a wildly entertaining game. <laughs> Utterly bizarre. Obviously, it would be better for me if the game ends with Hammurabi winning by spaceship, but, um, you know, how it ends is how it ends, based on what we've been seeing. So we actually have some quiet turns here. Hammurabi seems content just to chase after the spaceship, but I don't know if he's doing it fast enough, honestly. I also see some nukes being built. All right, not plotting war. Oh, you know this guy's plotting war. Of course he's going back to war. Although I don't think it's going to go very well, so Shock is back to plotting war, of course. Although, as I said, I don't think that's going to go very well for him. He's so far behind in tech now. Um, founding Civ Jewelers in Vijayanagara itself was also pretty nice, because that was this is worth a fair amount of culture. It's adding 12 per turn, but that gets fed through some multipliers. So 59 turns there. If he would just turn the slider on, the dummy. Um, it's that against Hammurabi needing... One, two, three, four, six more attacks, although he did just do the most expensive one, plus building the parts, plus them getting to their destination. Could be pretty close between those two victory conditions. <clears throat> Could be pretty close. Of course, there's also the question of who is Shaka about to hurl himself at again here. Is he going after Gandhi to slow him down, or is he going after Hammurabi to slow him down? Just kind of waiting to see where this maniac is going to strike next. He's worst enemy of both AIs, to no surprise. Of course, they both dislike him. Creative construction incorporated in Babylon. Okay, well, could be helpful to build spaceship parts, potentially. I mean, not a lot, but plus six, but... By the way, how close is he to a cultural victory? The game has gone on so long. Not really close at all. I saw Babylon at 35k, and I was like... Cultural victory, but no, none of the other cities are close at all. Good question. We could see who's ahead in terms of um, power. Uh, so Shaka and Hammer are close on the power graphs, although Hammer's tech is far better. Gandhi is below, but I think Gandhi would actually beat Shaka because his 
tech is just so much better. Shaka does not have infantry, does not have tanks. Gandhi has much better stuff. He's got infantry, tanks, airplanes, SDI. <laughs> Although Shaka doesn't have the ability to build nukes either. Yeah, Gandhi flipped Bulawayo a little while ago. Or captured it or flipped it. I don't know exactly which one. He gained control of it somehow. Gandhi still refuses to turn on the slider. All right, we're just waiting for that next conflict and keeping an eye on what Hammurabi is researching. All right, well, there, there's the word declaration, and it's against Hammurabi. You can tell when the turns take forever and there's little dots everywhere on the mini-map. Stop, oh, and we immediately have a stop the war against Hammurabi. This is going to be amusing. All right, how high will that war declaration counter get? How high will this get? We're up to, was that 16 now? For Or 15, up to 15. All right, just enough so I will not get any points. <laughs> yeah, you might see some nukes incoming here because uh, Hammurabi's got him and Shaka does not. So, uh, and um, Hammurabi has not taken a turn yet since the war started. All right, well, let's see what happens. Are we going to see the nukes flying in? I would expect so. The AI, AI is not hesitant about using them when it thinks it's appropriate. If it's got them, it usually sets them off. Yep. <laughs> but the peacekeeping mission stopped the war anyway. <laughs> UN peacekeeping succeeds. Shaka voted no, but then he was outvoted. So peacekeeping mission succeeded. How many nukes went off, just out of curiosity? <laughs> Two nukes, three nukes. Um, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Shaka, we did mention that he has become a rather unpopular individual over the course of this game. <laughs> looks like the looks like Toledo got. The absolute ever-loving you-know-what nuked out of it. Um, <laughs> more nukes up here. So Toledo, how many cities were actually captured? So Toledo was captured. Opus, which trades hands yet again. Yakutsk and Novgorod. So the other place that was targeted was right in the middle of the territory. Shaka has lost his little corridor through here. Jeez, okay. All right, um, now the thing is, though, look at this. Um, Hammurabi turned down the tech slider to upgrade more units. So that slowed down his teching here on robotics. Let's see if he increases the slider again. Because, like, if he slows down it, oh, my God, look at all these nukes here. It's just an absolute wasteland. Apparently, he nuked just about the entire, he nuked almost every single core city of Shaka. ICBMs on the main cities and then tactical nukes on the battle front, front lines. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, this land is this is a dystopian hellscape now. <laughs> Does Shaka even have the tech to clean Fallout? He might not. If he can't if he doesn't have the tech to clean up Fallout, he actually can't remove the Fallout. Um where do you actually get what tech actually gives you that? I'm trying to think where that is. Ecology. Oh, he does not have ecology, does he? Where is that? Oh, he does not have ecology. He's not even close to that. He can't scrub the fallout. He literally can't get rid of any of this fallout. Like, he, like he can't get rid of these tiles. They're useless now. Um, you can't work tiles that have fallout on them. Well, you can, but they don't give you any yield. They're just useless. Oh, my goodness. Poor Shaka, man. Like, look at this waste, barren wasteland over here. <laughs> like, this city can't work any of these tiles for all that... He's very lucky that that UN resolution came in to stop the war. <laughs> it's like, let's get this dystopian hellscape of a game over with. But still, is it going to be Hammurabi by space or is it going to be Gandhi by culture? A very costly one-turn war. Shaka's not even in the running for a second now. Um, that went very badly for him.
So Gandhi is 51 turns away. I have to say Hammurabi feels like he's closer to winning the space race than that. He got the uber expensive fusion. Now he's researching the fusion and Roddix are the two most expensive techs in the game. Um, not that these other techs are cheap, but these are the two most expensive. Getting them out of the way is pretty nice. Although actually robotics is an optional tech. You don't technically have to research this. Space elevator does help build the other parts though. So yeah, he only needs, I think, four more techs. I think Gandhi is, well, I mean, all Gandhi has to do is turn on the slider and I think he wins, but he has shown an aversion to doing that thus far. He seems to be on the space race track. Anyway, I think, do we still get one more war before this game is over? I feel like we get another war before this game is over. <laughs> How does total nuclear, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't even look at the, the graph for power to see what, oof. Yeah, that's what happens when it looks like your whole army gets nuked on the first turn of the war. Um, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a shark fin, a literal shark fin right there. <laughs> now is Gandhi plotting war? <laughs> I mean, we could see it's possible. I mean, Shaka just got the ever-loving stuffing beating out of him. Um, <laughs> nice. Does Hammurabi's loading up on more nuclear weapons? Anyway, let's see. Uh, no, he is not plotting war right now. Shaka. Shaka, you magnificent fellow. <laughs> <laughs> It's never boring. Never boring with this guy. Never boring. <laughs> he does not give up. <laughs> Gandhi has nukes as well. It's true. Gandhi also has nukes um, and is not afraid to use them. <laughs> I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, that's something entertaining to keep an eye on. Hammurabi continues building spaceship parts and we get the UN forcing everyone into free speech. Oh, Vijayanagara apparently got nuked as well. How did Vijayanagara get nuked? I don't understand how that city got nuked. Oh, it must have had a nuclear reaction explosion. You guys are right, nuke plant went off. Well, it didn't seem to interrupt the culture, maybe a tiny bit, but not much. Still 40 something turns. God, this is a slow game. Uh, looks like Gandhi did get a great engineer, though, so maybe he uses that for something. I don't know. Yeah, I guess his nuclear reactor went off. <laughs> should, have, should have stuck with something safe, like coal power. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gandhi can surely scrub Fallout, though, so he can remove that if he wants. Anyway, we're just next turning away here for the moment. Yeah, see, all that fallout cannot be cleaned by poor Shaka. He doesn't have the tech to remove the fallout. And they're just wasting time on UN resolutions right now. I think Hammurabi wants to go back for another round, too. He is still... He did not, like, set all his cities to build research to push for the spaceship. He is going uh, going off on building more military. I guess not. Well, maybe he just feels like he needs more to be safe. I thought he might be plotting war again, because, like, he's getting more nukes, more missile cruisers even as he builds the remaining spaceship. <laughs> longest game. We've had several go over 400, but uh, this is one of the longest. It's rare to go over 400. Only if the tech pace is absurdly bad does it go over 400. Oh, Gandhi got a great artist. Okay. He can use that to slice a, a quite a bit off this. I mean, if he uses that, um, I mean, that's a lot of turns towards the cultural victory if he uses that in Vijayanagara. If he uses it in Delhi, though, that's a waste. Let's see what he does with this. Uh, he did not use it in Vijayanagara. Does he still have the great artist? Oh, I think he used it in Delhi. I think he bombed Delhi, which was the wrong city, because Delhi was already going to hit before. Yeah, I think he just bombed in Delhi instead of Vijayanagara. Oh. Man, well, if he gets another one, he'll use it in this city. That was 20 turns of culture, yeah, but he used it in the wrong city. Uh, he probably saw Delhi was about to go legendary, so he just popped it there without realizing that that was not the city he had to worry about. Oh, boy. Anyway. Uh, 
for AI. All right, well, the only text that Hammurabi needs now are ecology and composites. Those are the last two. Stealth, of course, optional tech he doesn't need. And then he doesn't need tech at all after that point. Hammurabi looks like he's got a top two spot sealed down no matter what at this point, um, no matter what happens. He's also got most of the spaceship parts built. He actually took a relatively uh, smart path through the tech tree. Well, actually, no, he didn't get the labs until super late, which is silly. So I guess he didn't take a particularly smart path through the tech tree. I guess that could have been a lot better. So Delhi's legendary. Wait, what's this? Why are there Zulu? Did... Well, I mean, you knew it was going to happen, right? Let's just keep adding to that war declaration counter. <laughs> 16 wars which is an awful lot for a game that only has six AI leaders in it. Shaka, shaka, shaka. Just only knows how to do one thing. Right back to war again. So where is he attacking? I mean, Gandhi has... Gandhi has almost completely finished the tech tree, too. I mean, Gandhi has... He has mechs. Like, you're not going to take cities guarded by mechs with... What is he attack? What is Shaka attacking with? Cavs? Infantry? Like, that's not going to work. It's not going to work, buddy. So I don't understand this decision. Oh, he's attacking over here. He's attacking with infantry, Sam infantry, and some calves. Like that's not it's not gonna happen. He might, like, he can take one city, I think, but it's hard to see much happening beyond that. Actually, he's not even gonna take one city. This whole stack just got absolutely ripped to pieces. <laughs> yeah, he's just too far behind in tech right now. And then that's you know that's how the game works. You fall behind in tech, it gets ugly. Anyway, Hammurabi is now the Secretary General uh, instead of Gandhi, so that's pretty interesting. Up, oh, and we got nukes. More nuking. <laughs> Apparently up here. More nukes. Oh, boy. Shaka's whole territory is going to be a radioactive wasteland. Four nukes and three ICBMs. Shaka definitely does not have SDI. Um, well, there goes all of the Zulu units. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the nukes today. You certainly got to see a good show. Yeah, there goes uh, Shaka when he got nuked the first time and then nuked the second time. How about Hammurabi? Is he coming back in this war again? No. Shaka, where did it all go wrong? I think it all went wrong when he neglected to develop any economy whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, Gandhi uh, looks like he really turned... I cannot believe that Gandhi turned this around as we hit turn 400 on this game. I really can't believe that Gandhi turned this around from someone who had, you know, not just lost all these cities down here, lost Vijayanagara, had lost Delhi as well, lost Agra. Like, his whole core was gone, and yet he managed to bounce back. This city still 35 turns. So, I mean, if he gets a great... Uh, artist and bombs it in that city he could still win by culture amazingly I guess we should keep the focus on the conflict over here I was trying to see if Hammurabi was going to start assigning his cities to build the composites yeah this is not going great um, this city doesn't even have any defenses the gunship killed the defenders Gandhi got the space elevator for what that's worth Hammurabi has built most of the spaceship parts he, uh, he's built everything except the casings, and the AI can build them pretty fast, so. Yes, yeah, Shaka really collapsing now. <laughs> Gandhi, yeah, he's on the advance um, behind the nuclear fallout from his uh, air cover. God, this game, this world would be like the most miserable world to live in. It's an absolute hellscape. So there's all the casings. He needs... What, about three or four turns to build them? And then presumably he'll launch the spaceship. So we're looking at probably about 15 more turns, roughly. I'd say victory date right around turn 4, 18-ish, at a guess. That's about how long Gandhi has remaining to get over the top on his cultural victory. I mean, he is close. Close. He is at 42k. 42k culture. Right there. <laughs> I feel like the people on the spaceship are the winners. 
Yeah, just remember you have like we need. Oh, that's right. We need the ten turn. Yeah, I would maybe overestimating slightly. It's probably a little bit faster than that. All right, single currency not going to do anything right now. Um, this city, Mercia, has no defenders. All Gandhi has to do is walk a unit into it, but uh, he doesn't have any units over there available. So how many casings are remaining? As two casings built, two remaining. One, two. So the spaceship will launch in two turns. Yeah, it'll be like turn four sixteen. So it's basically, is Gandhi going to roll another great artist and detonate it? I don't know if the great artist would do be enough, but I think it would be incredibly close. It's hard to say what city Gandhi is closest to generating a great artist in. Uh, I don't think I can scroll through his... Can I scroll? No, I can't scroll through his cities the way you could on like F1 on your own list. So I don't know what city's closest. This city is... I mean, this city's going to get another great person. Unfortunately, it's only one in three of getting an artist, but... He's going to get another great person, so he's got at least one more shot at this. So it is possible. Alright, so the spaceship's going to go off here. Yeah, Hammurabi might declare after launching. The AI does like to do that sometimes. It's like after they finish the entire tech tree, they suddenly get more aggressive. Alright, off we go. Woo! Hammurabi has launched the spaceship. So, uh, yeah. Not surprisingly, Shaka can't hold cities anymore. He's just way, way, way too far behind in tech. And any defenders he tries to put in these cities just get nuked anyway. So he's starting, he's lost most of former Greece at this point. All right, so the spaceship arrives, what is it, turn 416? We can get the exact countdown on F8. So every turn it's like, are we going to see a great artist born or not? Um, Hammurabi. 1995, so that's eight more. Yeah, 415. It's turn 415. So we've got eight more turns, and this city... I don't... I think even if he gets a great artist in here, I think it's going to come up short, because it's only getting 250 per turn. Eight more turns is like 45k, and then a great artist would be 49k. I think it's just, just short of Gandhi, even if he gets the great artist, I think. But it's close. It's been a weird game. A very weird game. Where is Gandhi pushing? Uh, he's got a stack over here. I think. Yeah, here we go. Claude Duska is his target now. Boy, what a rise and fall for Shaka in this game, right? You know what the good news is? We get to see him again in the wildcard game. <laughs> get more Shaka. Everybody wants more Shaka, right? Babylon's also hit legendary culture, but Hammurabi's not going for that victory condition. Out of all the possible um, outcomes, Hammurabi being a winner, I don't think is one that I was considering. Also, Gandhi getting a second. He's never gotten a second. He's always been either first or eliminated. A second for Gandhi is really weird. It takes a bizarre game for that to happen. He's such a first or last leader. Um, as far as how this works. All right. DJ Anagara still just the slightest bit short. I mean, 44K on the last city is so close. One of the weirdest games we've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, a second place Gandhi means it's been an odd, odd game. <laughs> oh, this has been a long stream, you guys. It's not often we have these games last, uh, this has been like a four hour game. This is a very long one. But then again, a lot of the games are over by like turn 270. We've done like an extra 150 turns as comparison to some of the other games. It's also been a close game throughout too. There were so many games this game could have, ways this game could have broken in different directions. I'm going to go out on a limb and say in the alternate histories, Hammurabi first by spaceship on turn 416 or 415 is not going to be a very common outcome uh, in the great. Yeah, see, like we've run out of the great general names. That's what happens when the game can't even has done so many great generals. It's out of names to generate for them. Okay, so we should be down to the last turn here. I really thought this game was in suspense down to like the last ten turns or so. Um, <laughs> we ran out of great general turn names quite a while ago. Yeah, so look how close this was, right? 
Did he finally turn on? Oh, look, he turned the slider on 10% and it went up to 327. If you had just run the slider, you dummy, you would have won the game like 50 turns ago. Oh, geez. Look at that. Even going 10% boosted him from 250 to 327. He could have been at like 700 culture per turn here. Oh, my God. Well, actually, no, it didn't give him that much, but he still could have been at like 500 culture per turn. Oh, boy. Anyway, well, this Vic, the spaceship arrives next turn. It's 1995, and it's that's next turn. So well, when you're getting into the years in which people on the stream were actually alive, you know that it was a late ending to the game. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this one up. <laughs> yeah, Shaka is collapsing in full right now, but uh, that's it. It's, uh, it's a Hammurabi spaceship one. <laughs> Hammer, Gandhi pulled a genius move because the game one winner is screwed in the playoffs. Maybe. All right. Hammurabi wins by space. Turn 415. I'm going to jot that down. All right. Uh, results game one. Spaceship. Turn 415. Oh, my God. All right. Let's, uh, before we do the contest stuff, let's look at the replay. Just to see what what in the world was this game. All right, let's try watching this. What were some of the turning points uh, in this particular game? I don't even really know. Um, I think that one of the big things was the, the way the religion spread in this game. The, the, these two getting the same religion, these two getting Isabella's minority religion. I do think if Izzy had gotten her, her majority religion, if Christianity had spread to these two, I think these two would not have, um, I think that we would have seen Stalin's aggression directed eastward. I think that would have been much more likely. But uh, yeah, that did not happen. Izzy and Stalin getting caught in the fighting was, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, the Gandhi versus Pericles thing also was hugely significant. Imagine if Gandhi had not spent all that time fighting Pericles and then all that time fighting Shaka. Like, just imagine how different the game is. Gandhi probably wins cultural victory with ease if that happens. Anyway, so there we see the 2v1 taking down Stalin. And then Shaka finishes polishing off. By the way, the Greek civilization has been destroyed. The next turn, Shaka declares war on Gandhi. And then has shocking amount of success. Like, way more than anyone thought. BJ Anagara captured. And then, where's Delhi? Was, like, the next one. Somehow managed to take Delhi in there. There it is. There's Delhi. Or one of them, somewhere up there. Delhi was captured by the Zulus. Yeah, this is like the height of the Zulus. Delhi captured, um, gets peace with Hammurabi. Yeah, gets peace with Hammurabi, captures Delhi. It's like, Shaka's got this. He's going to win a domination victory. This is over. As he Here's where he rips apart... Um, Isabella, but I, in, in retrospect, that was a mistake. If he had stayed focused on Gandhi instead of going after Isabella, think how different this game would have been. He really should have stayed focused on Gandhi and finished the fight instead of going off to cut apart Izzy's cities. I think the AI did this because Izzy had weaker defenders. Izzy was behind in tech. So the AI is like, oh, these are easier cities to capture. Let's run off over here. But needed to stay focused on Gandhi. If he had knocked Gandhi out here, probably wins the game. But then we know what happens. Hammurabi gets back into the war, and Shaka just is ground down by too much fighting, too little economy, not enough tech. And the game just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on until Hammurabi eventually wins by spaceship. Um, yeah. What a game. <laughs> what a game. Here at the end, we're just watching Shaka lose his territories as he got nuked. It's a good thing nukes don't show up in the uh, event logger. It would just be all red text for getting nuked. Three hours, 51 minutes. Jeez, that was a long game. All right, I don't really know what to say about that one, other than that one was wild. Last you can see, Shaka is falling off for the final turns. GMP, Shaka had no economy left. Production, Hammurabi had the biggest one. Food, Shaka goes from being way ahead to being way behind. Power, the nukes decimated him in the fighting culture. Gandhi never ran the slider. Pretty crazy. Oh, dead units. I don't think we... Oh, we can see that. I forgot... Wait, can we see... How do we see... Can we do that? Oh, yeah, we can do that. I actually didn't know you could do that. So Shaka killed um, a lot of units. 
and lost a lot of units. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I actually didn't know you could do that. Thanks. I didn't realize that they had a drop down menu here, too. That's uh, literal hundreds. He probably, this is over 1,000 units lost in this game. That's over 1,000. I think it is about 1,200 at a rough estimate. It was a lot. <laughs> also lost a settler at some point. Okay. Okay, buddy. I don't know when that happens. And then built 40 Akandas. Okay. Well, that that was a game, all right. So let's uh, do our contest stuff. And then we'll wrap up for this week. Boy, I'm getting tired. This was a long, long 